1819 News. This week, an international event is underway in Huntsville. The Association of the U.S. Army is holding its global symposium at the Von Braun Center until this Wednesday. Technological expertise will be showcased for those within military service and leadership. AUSA says this event is to create synergy between industry partners and the defense industrialized base in order to move towards modernization of the U.S. Army and become a multi-domain capable force. There will be 200 exhibits at this event, and around 6,000 attendees are expected to be there. I'll be back with more Alabama stories after this. Where I was living was not a great place to live anymore. I began to pray for a place to go, praying for all of these things that a nine-year-old would want. I wanted horses, big house with a bunch of people my age. I wanted parents. I wanted a mom and a dad. Before I even prayed it, the Lord had already answered my prayer with the Big Oak Ranch. Who would that nine-year-old be if she never came to the Big Oak Ranch? I would be trying to fight for survival instead of fighting to break a cycle. Big Oak Ranch, a Christian home for children needing a chance. A former police officer in Decatur has filed a motion to dismiss the federal lawsuit filed against him for the death of Steve Perkins in September of 2023. Mac Marquette was one of the four officers responding to activity at Perkins' home regarding the repossession of one of his vehicles. The Perkins family has filed a federal civil lawsuit against Marquette for depriving Perkins of his federal right and shooting him. The motion from Marquette's lawyer says this cannot be proven and should therefore be dismissed. Comedian Tom Segura is coming to Alabama in the fall of this year. Segura will perform at the Mercedes-Benz Amphitheater in Tuscaloosa on August 30th. Segura and his wife are part of a comedy podcast called Your Mom's House, which has 2 million subscribers on YouTube. Tickets for the performance go on sale this Friday. I'm Andrea Tyson. For more news affecting Alabamians, go to 1819news.com. And while you're there, subscribe to the daily newsletter. What are you planning on using your tax refund on? With Southern Steel's strong, durable, and built-to-last metal structures, you can build anything from towering warehouses, pole barns, manufactured metal roof panels, or even a barn dominium. Save time and money with a quick turnaround and enjoy unmatched protection against the elements. Whether you're a business owner seeking efficiency or a homeowner looking for peace of mind, choose Southern Steel for a lifetime of security. Trust in quality. Visit them today and build your dreams in steel. 1295 North McDonough Street, 240 the views and opinions of the following program are solely those of the host and other contributors. These do not necessarily represent those of Liberty Acquisitions 825, Blue Water Broadcasting, its management staff, or any advertisers. It's time for Montgomery's conversational radio show. It's news and views on New Talk 93.1 FM. To join the conversation, call 272-9228. After damming politicians uphill and down dale for many years as rogues, vagabonds, frauds, and scoundrels, I sometimes suspected, like everyone else, I often expect too much of them. Joey Clark. Welcome into the program on a rainy afternoon here in Montgomery, Alabama. But I appreciate all of y'all on the YouTube channel as well as on the X platform for joining in on the show. So much to get to today, but as is tradition, probably my favorite part of the week. We have the one, the only, Judge Andrew Napolitano over the stream. Judge, how are you, sir? I'm very fine, thank you, and you're very generous, too. To conclude that this is one of your favorite times of the week, it is also for me. <laughs> Amen. What's good? Mutual admiration society here. Uh, breaking news that came this morning. I don't know if you had time to look over it, but the New York Times and Wall Street Journal reporting that the Supreme Court appears skeptical of a bid to curtail abortion pill access. Uh, have you had any chance to look at this? Well, what I have looked at are the New York Times, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, CNN summaries of the oral arguments, and it's not it's not very optimistic mm -hmm. if you believe that the court meant what it said uh, in the Dobbs case. The Dobbs case said the feds can have nothing to do with abortion, uh, that it is a medical issue or a criminal issue or both, and both of those areas have been uh, reserved by the Constitution to the states. 
Now comes this issue of whether or not the Food and Drug Administration can authorize the use of an abortion pill self-administered with a prescription in states that have prohibited abortion. Hmm. Seems pretty clear to me that the Food and Drug Administration cannot do that under Dobbs. Oh, but not today. The Republicans uh, on the Supreme Court uh, worried that their votes might uh, help Joe Biden uh, are abandoning their pro-life roots, uh, it appears, uh, and will allow people to get the pill. It will render the prohibitions on abortion mean in states like uh, Texas, Alabama, uh, Louisiana, Montana, it'll render them utterly moot and meaningless. Now, I should wait until the opinion comes out before I criticize it. They may very well decide the plaintiffs don't have standing. They, their ox hasn't been gored. Uh, and, um, and so they're not going to rule at all. But I was extremely uh, discomforted by the reports of the uh, oral argument, oral arguments this morning including by the justice I admire the most and was fiercely pro-life, Justice uh, Neil Gorsuch, he sounded like Kamala Harris. Right. And you, you just never know. You called, uh, by the way, Brett Kavanaugh. I remember you were, I believe, on Fox saying, don't go with this guy. Uh, well, but I Justice Kavanaugh is, uh, is um, a George W. Bush type conservative uh, Republican. And um, I had warned Trump about that. And Trump's people had gotten those warnings from a number of other people. But he was determined to make the nomination. We all know what Kavanaugh went through. I don't think he should have gone through that. I felt right. sorry for him. But nevertheless, uh, he's on uh, he's on the court. Um, Barrett and uh, and uh, Justice Barrett and Justice uh, Gorsuch are serious scholars of the law, intellectuals who believe in uh, natural rights, I doubt that Justice Kavanaugh knows what that is. Well, and we'll see what the court decides on this case and, and so many others. It seems like, the, are, does, are they more active than usual or is it just because the court is so conservative leaning that now more and more things seem to be up for uh, overturning and, and changing a precedent? Uh, there was a time when uh, the court compromised more than it does now. And uh, now that the uh, conservatives... Uh, have the six to three block, uh, they don't have to compromise. But I, I just don't get what happened uh, this morning. I just don't, uh, unless it's politics, I don't I don't get it. They made it crystal clear in Dobbs. The feds have no say uh, in abortion. They're going to invite Congress to start writing regulations, either permitting abortion or restricting it, however you want to look at it. Even though under Dobbs, it says exclusively a, a state issue. It's the exact same court that ruled on uh, Dobbs. Uh, there is the substitution of Justice Jackson for Justice Breyer, but their their uh, views are the same. How they could flip like this and suddenly find some federal right, I don't know. But we'll wait and see what they come up with. And uh, again, folks, we're talking to Judge Andrew Napolitano. You can always go to judgenap.com or check out his podcast, Judging Freedom, wherever podcasts are available. I tend to watch on YouTube myself. So we don't spend a lot of time on this today, but what do you make of the uh, reduced bond uh, for Trump in the property case there in New York? Well, I thought the property uh, judgment against him was one of the greatest acts of government theft in the modern era, maybe in the history of the of the government. Uh, there was no crime. There was no victim. There was no harm. Yet the government persuaded a judge that it, the state itself, somehow uh, suffered because of what Trump's negotiations were with his lenders. The lenders got on the stand and said, you know, he did, he did lowball us a little, uh, highball us a little bit on the evaluations of these properties. Big deal. We sent our own appraisers in there. Right. And an appraisal is a range and, and our range and his range meet, met each other. There was a, there was a confluence of the ranges um, he didn't trick us. In fact, we were happy to loan money to lend money to him. Uh, he paid it back uh, every nickel on time. We would lend to him again. And still, the judge bought this nonsense that somehow the state was harmed. So any reduction in the burden on him, I think, is is a good thing. 
where they come up with 175 million. The $454 million judgment consists of 164 million in ill-gotten gains and the rest in interest. So I guess they rounded off the 164 million to 175 and said, that's what you have to post. Now he's not posting this money in order to perfect the appeal. He's posting this money to prevent the state from seizing his assets. Could you imagine if the state seized his assets, sold them, paid off the mortgages on them, paid itself the half a billion in judgment, gave the rest back to Trump, and then the case was reversed on appeal? Well, that would be catastrophic <laughs> for everybody. Uh, so uh, the appellate court wisely reduced the bond needed to to stop the execution of the judgment to an amount that he can he can make. It's still a lot of money. See, they're going to put 175 million in cash and securities uh, in the state's hand uh, or in the court's hands, or he's going to get an insurance policy naming the court as the beneficiary, which will guarantee the payment of the 175 million uh, if the appeal fails. Now, if the appeal fails and he doesn't have the 454 million, it'll be over half a billion by the time the appeal is heard. What does he do then? Well, that that's that's for the state to figure out. Well, and as you told me last week too, they have this independent monitor over the Trump organization. So in certain ways, he can he's come up with, I think, new strategies with true social going public and whatnot. But it seems like the Trump organization kind of has their hands tied to at the same time as they're being asked to pay all this money. They do. They do have their hands tied. I mean, they're still developing buildings as far as I know, and they're still managing uh, these uh, buildings, but they can't do anything uh, that incurs a debt in excess of $5 million without the monitor's approval. So if she's not approving day to day, oh, there's a window broken there, let's put the money out and buy the glass to fix it. She's not approving things like that. Uh, her threshold of approval is not met until the bill is $5 million. Ooh, Well, we'll see where that goes. Unbelievable numbers, Joey, that they we're, really we're are. throwing around. But that's what it's like when you're in Trump's position of having developed, sold off, but still managing these skyscrapers. Yeah, it's absolutely insane numbers, and I, I agree with you completely. This is, uh, we, I think, both agree the government is a gang of thieves writ large, uh, but this is very thuggish, almost gangsterous behavior on their part. So, I, mean, I, I don't case. know who. I was having a conversation with uh, Gerald Salenti, who runs a very libertarian uh, website, and somebody took snippets of what I said and made it sound like it was one continuous talk and put it on YouTube. Uh, we posted it on uh, Judging Freedom. It is a pretty interesting and succinct explanation of exactly what the hell happened to him and the nonsense that the state offered and that the court accepted. Now, uh, shifting gears here, in a second, I want to get to the freedom of speech and this whole misinformation, disinformation, malinformation infrastructure the government's putting up, and particularly they're now focusing on TikTok. But uh, first, I have to ask you about Julian Assange, because today... He might learn if he can, you know, appeal the extradition to the United States. The UK High Court's going to uh, make that decision. But why should Julian Assange be pardoned? Well, he, I'd have to modify the question to hmm. why should Julian Assange be prosecuted? Hmm. I mean, he shouldn't have been prosecuted in the first place. The Obama administration recognized that his behavior was protected. Uh, by the Pentagon Papers case, it prosecuted Chelsea Manning, who stole these documents. His name was Bradley Manning at the time. Uh, he was convicted and sentenced to 45 years in jail, and then President Obama commuted the sentence. Um, the Trump administration decided to prosecute Julian Assange. I attempted to dissuade the president from the prosecution. I failed. I then attempted to persuade the president to pardon him. I thought I had succeeded, but then other people... Uh, changed his mind. He should not have been prosecuted or having been prosecuted, he should be pardoned uh, because his behavior was 100% protected uh, by the First Amendment. That's not according to me. That's according to the Pentagon Papers case. I can go through the facts of the Pentagon Papers case, but it is basically that the news media 
is immune from civil and criminal liability for revealing something that is newsworthy, no matter what it is and no matter how they get it. Uh, the, the high court did rule in London this morning. It rejected uh, about 90% of his appeal, but it did uh, say to the U.S., you will have to guarantee that his First Amendment rights will be respected as if he were an American citizen. Now, I don't know how the U.S. can guarantee that because a guarantee of that would mean a dismissal of the indictment. Oh, well, uh, yes. If they don't guarantee that uh, in 10 days, I'm sure they will or attempt to. And, and I don't know how the DOJ could guarantee what's going to happen in a courtroom. They can't. But if they don't guarantee that, uh, then the appeal will go forward uh, to the highest court in Britain again or to the uh, European Court of Criminal Appeals in Strasbourg, uh, France. If it gets there, it is extremely unlikely that he would be uh, extradited. Well, we shall see, because I, I look at the case of Julian Assange, and it, it seems like it's part of the larger trend that I'm at least noticing reading, say, historically, that it seems like there was this high watermark in the 60s, 70s, uh, and even into the 80s, where free speech was all the rage. The ACLU would defend it to the hill, to the left. And anybody who describes himself as a, a liberal, classical liberal libertarian would defend free speech. But it seems as new technology has allowed things like TikTok and now Elon Musk is Twitter, or folks just make in-runs around, say, the few big corporate networks that, you know, would speak as they wanted to, but there's only so many seats on those positions, so you can kind of control the information that way. But now that people are actually freer because of technology, it seems the freedom of speech isn't as respected as much by the government. So they come up with uh, a non-state intelligence actor to describe Julian Assange, which is just absurd on its face. And now they're coming up with all these excuses on how we need to regulate something like TikTok. And I, I'm, I'm of the humble opinion it won't stop at TikTok. So uh, what do you make of this latest push to essentially rebrand free speech as misinformation, disinformation, malinformation? Well, you know, um, George Orwell uh, exposed the um, one of many theories of totalitarianism you know, one is if you want to uh, eliminate a group of people, uh, call them by a different name, call them a fetus in the womb or call them subhuman, as, as some Israeli ministers are calling the uh, Palestinians. Um, if you want to suppress speech, well, don't call it speech, call it misinformation. Uh, the House of Representatives, led by our Republican friends, <laughs> uh, voted to uh, ban TikTok. Uh, this is an assault, a direct assault uh, on the First Amendment. Why do they want to ban TikTok? Well, they're worried that TikTok, the owners of TikTok, a company called Byte Dance, B-Y-T-E Dance, uh, are close to members of the Chinese Communist Party, which, of course, runs China. And so they're worried that TikTok will be used to spy on their American users. Uh, and they're also worried that uh, TikTok will use its algorithms to uh, push up stories that the Chinese want the Americans to see and suppress stories that the Chinese don't want the Americans to see. So in my column uh, last week, I, I had a little bit of fun. A column is called, Can Congress Ban TikTok? In my view, the answer is no, morally and constitutionally, because the federal government itself already does exactly what it claims it fears the Chinese will do. Every keystroke on every uh, mobile device or desktop captured by the feds. Every piece of information transmitted into, out of, or within the United States on fiber optic cable captured, spied on by the feds. Last week, the feds told the Supreme Court and the case where the attorneys general of Missouri and Louisiana sued to stop the feds from pressuring the Department of Homeland, uh, stop the Department of Homeland Security from pressuring big tech to push up stories that they liked and suppress stories they didn't. The federal government actually told the court that they needed to enter the marketplace of ideas 
to rid it of misinformation. That is wrong, wrong, wrong. The whole purpose of the First Amendment is to keep the government out of the business of speech, totally and completely out of the business of speech. We can say what we can think as we wish and say what we think and read what we want from any source we want and publish what we want, period, no exceptions, no government involvement. You wouldn't know that if you listen to the speeches by Republicans and some Democrats on the floor of the House of Representatives. The only one who opposed all this, it hasn't gotten to the Senate yet, the only one who opposed this eloquently and articulately is Congressman, no surprise, Thomas Massey of uh, Kentucky. He was the Maya canary in the coal mine on this one, especially, though I've gotten wise to this. You've seen it over and over again where, oh, this is just for Al-Qaeda. This is just for ISIS. This is, and it's all these tools, even the so-called color revolutions and uh, working up civil society through the State Department, whether in Egypt or Ukraine, all these tools have been brought back home and are now being used. Uh, so I just don't buy, you know, what Dan Crenshaw getting up there and talking about how bad China is. It just doesn't scare me. I don't believe him anymore, Judge, is the problem. Right, 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 right. Same here. What, what they really don't do is they don't trust the American public to make up their own minds. When they told the Supreme Court, this is a DOJ lawyer uh, justifying the DHS, sorry for all these three letters, but I think people know what I'm talking about, Department of Justice lawyer, justifying the Department of Homeland Security going to third parties, big tech, and having them do what the government can't directly do, suppress the speech the government hates and fears, advance the speech that the government uh, likes. In that oral argument, the DOJ lawyer acknowledged that the government wants to involve itself in the marketplace of ideas. Mm. I mean, if the Supreme Court allows this, they basically have violated their oaths uh, to preserve, protect, and defend the First Amendment. And, you know, one last thing, when I saw this awful terror attack in Moscow, which is going to just lead to more, I think, escalation and just more people dying uh, on both sides of this fight, both belligerents, I, I remembered, a, a, well, I hate to be so light with it, but when we pull out of Afghanistan, they said the threat of ISIS-K is still out there. And when ISIS-K is apparently taking responsibility for this, I'm like, wait, 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 I thought ISIS-K was Pig Latin for CIA. Like, this seems way too quick and buttoned up. For so within 55 minutes uh, of the reports of this massacre, the uh, State Department announced two things. One, it wasn't Iran. It wasn't Ukraine. <laughs> oh, pardon me. It wasn't Ukraine. And two, it was ISIS-K. These two statements are unknowable at that point in time, but that's the nonsense that the State Department expected us to believe isis k is a creation of the cia you're exactly uh you're exactly correct so if it was isis k cia knew about it my intelligence people are telling me cia mi6 all knew uh, about this either helped in the planning or were indifferent to it either way it's an act of war an act of war the united states against russia by facilitating or looking the other way for this kind of slaughter. If these jihadists had been true jihadists, they wouldn't have run away. They believe in martyrdom at the scene. They would have waited for the police to uh, kill them. They ran away. They were caught. They were tortured brutally and medievally. Um, they all, three of them have already pleaded guilty, but they're probably revealing information uh, to help the Russians track down uh, who was behind this. They were in their uh, in their race to leave the Moscow area, chased by Moscow police, talking to colleagues in Ukraine who had opened up some passageway for them at the border so that they wouldn't have to stop at the border. Well, I just hope we keep the uh, nuclear genie in the bottle. Uh, Annie Jacobson just did a great interview with Lex Friedman. Her new book is called simply, I think, Nuclear War, and it is a chilling reminder of how bad this could be and how close we've come in the past uh, i recommend that book to you to anybody go watch the interview it's it everybody needs to be reminded of what sort of fire literal fire and uh, fury we're playing with well here. look um, i just did an interview with the great professor jeffrey Sachs. he was in beijing we had a few problems with the connection but we spoke for about 25 minutes the united states and russia have zero diplomacy not minimal mm -hmm. zero how bad is that 
They have enough weapons to destroy the world. We have enough weapons to destroy the world. And we don't talk to each other. Instead, Joe Biden calls the president of, uh, of Russia an SOB who should be removed from power. What kind of a way uh, is this to talk to the first or second most powerful person on the planet? Well, and on that happy note, I, I always appreciate the time we've gone long today. So uh, thank you so much uh, for the time, uh, Judge. And uh, until next week, appreciate oh, it. You sir. got it, my man. All the best. Happy Easter to you. Happy Easter. My uh, column uh, coming out Thursday is taking, you'll get it later today because you always get it early, taking Easter seriously. I'll have to um, possibly read that on Thursday or Friday. Appreciate okay. you, sir. All the best, my man. Again, folks, that's Judge Andrew Napolitano. Always wonderful having him here on the program. Uh, 272-9228. If you want to hop in on the conversations we're having here today. Now, uh, I believe at 2 o'clock, we will have Caroline Dobson, who is, of course, candidate for Congress, running for Congress in the brand new District 2 here in Alabama. And uh, look forward to talking to Caroline, it should be a pretty competitive race, in my humble opinion. Uh, a very competitive race, indeed. But we also have, well, more scenes, uh, more imagery from the scene of the Francis Scott Key Bridge there in Baltimore. Uh, I know Greg Budell posted what happened, how the ship lost power, massive cargo ship lost power. It came back on, generators hit, they go out again, and they lose, they're completely losing control. If you don't have the power to steer a vessel that large, it's going to go where it's going to go, hit a major pillar of that bridge, and it collapsed like Jenga. Oh, you lose. It's not clear the exact death toll. A few cars, uh, 10 plus is what I saw being reported were thrown into the water I, again death toll is not clear i know there are a lot of statements being made uh, by the, the mayor of baltimore and, and so many others there were a few heroes in this case who saw this coming who stopped people a lot of people from get, being on the bridge when this occurred but uh, this is the stuff of, of nightmares when you see what was thrown baltimore's way <sighs> And it's another suggestion, too, that we're dropping the ball on a lot of the basics. A lot of major infrastructure continues to, well, not work. Whether it's Boeing flights or this malfunction with this massive ship. And you got to wonder what's next. I do have to do this break, but first, this part of the program brought to you by Montgomery Men's Health. And they're at Montgomery Men's Health. Well, you know, fellas, as you get older, or it might be you're young still. You could be still in your 20s. That is, in fact, young could be in your 30s i still like to think i'm fairly young there are a lot of men walking around who don't realize low testosterone is what's causing them so many of their problems what do i mean by problems well symptoms include lack of energy you're always tired you're not really sleeping well uh you're seeing a loss of muscle mass even if you're going to the gym you're seeing a decrease in sex drive you just feel like you're walking through life in a fog well, that could very well be low testosterone. It's huge if you know whether or not it's testosterone causing those issues. It'll help you combat those issues. So what you can do is go to the providers at Montgomery Men's Health. They'll conduct a testosterone-focused lab workup plus a consultation for only $99. And Montgomery Men's Health has low-T treatments that can truly change lives. Men can experience higher energy, better gains in the gym, brother, better mental clarity, improved sleep patterns, a faster metabolism, you usually even notice an increased libido. And you can actually book the same day that you call. That number for Montgomery Men's Health, 440-3663. That's 440-3663. Or go to MontgomeryMensHealth.com to book your appointment today. Be sure to tell them that Joey guy on the radio sent you. He may not know whether he's coming or going. But whether you're going to work or coming home, Greg Budell is there. Mornings, 6 till 9, and afternoons, 3 till 6. Only on News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. Sweetheart? Yeah? Well, I've been thinking, I'm tired of this house. What? You want to move? Yeah, but we'd have to do some updating, you know, to get top dollar. 
Updating really does make a lot of sense, especially when you're talking about lighting. That's where Crosby Electric comes in. They'll help you choose a stunning pendant fixture over your bathroom sink, dramatic flush mount lighting over your kitchen island, maybe some LED panels to backlight your countertops. Energy-saving LED lighting has really come down in price. Or how about a new ceiling fan that moves air more efficiently than fans built only 10 years ago? The bottom line, updating your lighting almost always delivers a full return on your investment. Well, sweetheart, the house looks looks fabulous. Yeah. Guess I'll put out the for sale sign. Wait. What? I, I don't, don't want to move. move. Find out how to turn your house into the home you'll never want to leave. Visit crosbyelectric.com or call 272-2085. This is your roving reporter and today I am talking with an elk. Uh, hey man, Mr. Elk, I was just wondering what do elk do to take care of their money? Well, like most smart folks, we call David Erdis. You mean Alabama's most favorite asset preservationist? That's him, man. We call him up at 334-279-7431 or 205-479-0839. I see. Yes, he is our preferred money man. The money man with the money plan. Uh, you've been paying attention. Well, could you give us those numbers one more time? 334-279-7431 or 205-479-0839. And I just want to try to give you a heads up, man. Oh, what's that? I'm uh, not an elk. Not an elk, huh? Well, then, pray tell, what are you? Ah, uh, Knights of Columbus. <laughs> I am not even going to make a comment. Uh, well, the baby likes it. Savings. Now that's speaking the Lowe's language. And with my Lowe's rewards, your savings just keep coming. Save money with member-only offers and earn points when you shop. More points equal more rewards just for you. Because Lowe's knows you earned it, literally. Learn more about our new loyalty program at Lowe's.com slash MyLowe'sRewards. Program subject to terms and conditions. Points are awarded on eligible purchases. See Lowe's.com slash terms for full details. Subject to change. At Charmin, we heard you shouldn't talk about going to the bathroom in public. So we decided to sing about it. When you're from the Charmin, don't you stop to party? This is most so pretty, like everybody. Charmin's in your seats, the big fountain, heavy face, a grimace, so it's not. It's our party, party. She's a Sherman Ultra Soft is irresistibly soft and more absorbent, so you can use less. Enjoy the go with Sherman. For too long, Alabama's statewide news companies have shamed us for our conservative Christian values. Alabama deserves a news company that cherishes our culture, a company that isn't bought and paid for by the powers that be. 1819 News is that company. Run by Alabamians for Alabamians, 1819 News celebrates what is good and beautiful about our state while exposing those who work against our values in secret. Just go to 1819news.com to learn more. Subscribe to our newsletter. That's 1819news.com. Hi there, I'm Kim Williams with Alabama Home Mortgage. For years, I've been asking you to call me at Alabama Home Mortgage because there is a difference in mortgage companies. Did you know the current national average turn time to close on a mortgage is 48 business days? But not at Alabama Home Mortgage. At Alabama Home Mortgage, our average close time is 16 business days. That's a month faster than the rest. How do we do it? With over 60 years of combined experience in the industry, our team knows mortgages. Our years of experience yield a better experience for our customers. Folks, time is money. Whether you're looking to buy or refi, don't waste time with another mortgage company, bank, or credit union. We close on time every time. Give Alabama Home Mortgage a call at 567-4223. That's 567-4223. Or visit us online at myalabamahomemortgage.com to complete an application on your time. Our fast turn time is just one difference that sets us apart from the rest. It's not just a slogan. Call Alabama Home Mortgage because there is a difference in mortgage companies. NMLS 1586 Equal Housing Lender. I'm Brett Lanham from Benjamin Moore New Look, and we couldn't have imagined how easy, affordable, and flexible advertising on the radio could be. It has been near effortless on our part. You could say our last two years have been the best in 10 because of a skyrocketing GDP. I say it's owed to Blue Water Broadcasting and their advertising staff. Now you can add the power of digital advertising to the number one reach of radio. Let Blue Water's 20 years of local advertising and marketing success show you how. 
Grow your business with a complete suite of digital solutions combined with the reach of the most listened to radio group in the River Region. Call us or go to BlueWaterBroadcasting.com to find out how we can increase your return on investment. Blue Water Broadcasting, local folks helping local business. With the Wall Street Business Report, I'm Rich Thomason. Following yesterday's losses, Wall Street opened modestly higher this morning. Trump Media takes its place on the Nasdaq Stock Exchange today. Trump Media debuts with a stock price near $50 and a market value of roughly $6.8 billion. Common stock of Trump Media and Technology Group is trading under the ticker symbol DJT. China, working to become a major player in the EV marketplace, has filed a complaint at the World Trade Organization over U.S. subsidies for electric vehicles. Chinese electric vehicle makers are showcasing their latest models, including a flying car, as they take on global rivals at the Bangkok International Motor Show. Home prices continue to soar, hitting a new high in the month of January. That's according to the Case-Shiller 20-City Home Price Index. For the Wall Street Business Report, I'm Rich Thomason. The Rich Thomas Weather Network, brought to you by Montgomery Paint and Body. From a little fender bender to total body repair, MPB will fix it good as new, maybe better. For over 35 years, the Turner family has been getting you back on the road. Call 279-7325. Well, hi, everybody. The risk of showers is fading away quickly for most of us, otherwise mostly cloudy. Temperatures today, upper 60s to around 70. Partly cloudy, cooler tonight, overnight low 48. Tomorrow, sunshine, 74 for a high on Wednesday, a little cooler Thursday. I've got us in the upper 60s with more sun, and then a beautiful Easter weekend forecast. Sunshine, 72, good Friday, upper 70s Saturday, near or above 80 on Easter Sunday with more sunshine. From the Blue Water Weather Center, this is Rich Thomas. For the lowest prices around on flooring and DIY flooring installation supplies, Budget Floors and More is your new best friend. Luxury vinyl plank, carpet, ceramic tile, floor installation supplies, and more with prices lower than the big box stores. Budget Floors and More, Hunter Lane, across from Delray to Publix. The River Region's first and only news talk station on FM. Live, local talk. News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. Joey Clark. Welcome back. Now, I know y'all know this already. I know y'all know this, but the diddler is on the loose. And yes, on Twitter, on the X platform, last night especially, the diddler. Not the Riddler, the Diddler was trending. Why? Because the home of Sean Diddy Combs, Huff Daddy, P. Diddy, the Diddler, his home searched by federal officials. (laughs) Sources said the music mogul is the subject of federal investigations after allegations involving sex trafficking, sexual assault, illegal narcotics, and firearms. Ooh, and I hate to bring this up, but it is just true. There was one person at the beginning of 2024 who called this, who called this all day, every day. You know who I'm talking about. Oh, you know. The deviance is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you did it or whoever you is. Cat Williams is a prophet, ladies and gentlemen. Say it again, Kat. Say it again. The deviance Deviance. is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. So Sean Diddy Combs is subject of a federal investigation amid a wave of lawsuits that have been filed against the rap music mogul since November. Now, when I first saw this, folks, I'm like, well, it could be that somebody was trying to just get a payday. So, you know, maybe Diddy ain't a saint, but he wasn't doing the things alleged. And it was settled pretty darn quick. But again, you're starting to see more and more people around, say, the Hollywood, the entertainment scene. Especially the folks that had their heyday in the 90s, into the early aughts. 
do I need to mention that Nickelodeon documentary series that just came out on the dark side of Nick at night and kids programming there on Nickelodeon? But three women and a man have been interviewed by federal officials in Manhattan in relation to allegations of sex trafficking, sexual assault, and the solicitation and distribution of illegal nar narcotics and firearms. Interviews with three other subjects are also scheduled, according to a law enforcement source. Four law enforcement sources told NBC News that federal agents with Homeland Security investigations on Monday executed search warrants at Los Angeles and Miami properties belonging to Combs. The sources said the warrant is out of the Southern District of New York. <sighs> now, some folks said, you know, the diddler skipped town. The diddler got out of town, but apparently he did not flee the country. A lot of folks at first got this wrong. TMZ, of course, it's going to be TMZ, caught a video of him uh, there in Miami pacing around an airport. So the first video of Diddy after his homes were raided, the diddler was uh, kind of just walking around. Team Z is told this shows Diddy pacing around outside a customs office there at the airport. And as you can see, he's not being detained by officers. But still... De deviance is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. Don't matter. Don't matter. Watch yourself. Let's go to line one. You're on the air. Who's this? Good morning, sir. Or good evening. I keep getting you. Oh, let me, on, on him, though, uh, uh, on Cat, there's something, but you remember, and he, he he came out after, you remember the first person that came out and was bucking everybody was uh, was uh, Ice Cube. Remember? Oh, I did, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, then, then it was Cat Williams. All right, well, Tracy Morgan the same way, and look, and Ricky Smiley, they made him cry, but see, where, where Cat Williams got everybody is the dress part. He keeps saying, <laughs> I ain't wearing a dress, I didn't wear a dress, but guess what? He played a gay man in 2008, and he's already won his car. He's already got his car white. Him and Ricky Smiley and Ice Cube all of them was in a movie called First Sunday. Okay. He is playing us, and he knew what was coming because he is a part of it. He ain't no... No magic man. He knows what he did to get into the clique. He didn't have to wear a dress. He played a gay man back before it was cool. You know what I mean? Like, you sure he just it, wasn't like, a pimp again? Huh? You sure uh, he just what? wasn't a pimp in First Sunday? Yeah, he was. He played a gay man. I, I, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, uh, I mean, he played. I mean, I understand what you're saying, but he, he could have been. I, if he was a pimp, I, the, the video, the part, I took, <laughs> maybe I need to go watch the whole movie because I just took clips out. It's no, it's just it's just funny when when somebody like calls this out and then you see in yeah. the news, okay, well, there's something to this. So yeah, it's 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 uh he, he done his deal, due diligence. He didn't have to wear the dress, but and that's why he keeps hiking on that. And another person who uh why we only these, these people who see so far out in the future, and that's uh uh, uh Charleston White. And guess what? All the video I know you've seen of him throwing. I'm, I'm telling this to all my people right now. How I, how I watch some of the catches. Everybody in the world seen that video, I believe. If you ain't gonna watch the part where he throws the flowers at the dude, watch his partner come out from backstage. This is how black folks don't even trust each other. They had a setup, and he wouldn't even pay the man in the audience until he done that. Until he stood up, you'll see his partner come out the back and put money in the flower pot. He sticks the money in the flower pot. He throws the flower, hits the dude in the Lakers jersey. A big old black dude behind the dude in the Lakers jersey go, goes right to the flower pot. You watch feel good. He goes to the money. He don't go up there on stage with everybody else. And this, this y'all watch it with y'all got watch this stuff with like. All with right, this, Randall, like, we 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 gotta rein it in here because I got a lot of calls rolling right, in. Go, go ahead. What's up? So, yeah, just watch that part, and you'll see where he all these people they putting out in front of us, they done done what they're supposed to do to, to make the next mark. Go watch the flowers, though, now, and you'll see what I'm talking now, about. Now, Diddy isn't under arrest just yet, but it does seem like uh, there, there are a lot of allegations being thrown around. And if the rumors about these massive parties with all sorts of stuff going down, who were the people at those parties? Well, Casey was one of them. She sued him. And she won. That's what that's what got this started. See, fifty right. cent was another one he tried to take. I told you this yesterday though. So I don't wanna go back over, but like if you listen yesterday, you know what I'm saying. Like but right. but Casey 
sued him and won. And I, 50 Cent was ready to kill this man. Because 50 is a, 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 a real. A, a oh, real, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, but. But Diddy still tried to treat him like he was a Justin Bieber and try to take it clothes shopping. You can look all the videos up, and they 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 asked him in front of uh, on live radio, "Why did you try to take Fifty Cent shopping?" And uh, and just listen to his answer. It's okay. so stupid. He thought he was protected, just like Suge Knight. They all thought they're untouchable, but they see him now. When they're done with you, they're done with you. Just like bye. Mm. All right, bro. Later, Randall. Let's go to line two. You're on there. Who's this? Hi, uh, Mr. Pink. Hey, Mr. Pink. How you doing? I'm good, man. Uh, I wanted to add to the conversation, man. Um, I wanted to talk about the Reformation. Okay. I'm just, I'm, a, I'm, I'm just playing, man. That's that's for another day. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but no, um, I want to apologize to the people out there that um heard me say I'm not canceling Diddy. I knew he was a, a nasty dude, and we all knew because um, like people that went to college, we know about those uh college parties, right. you know. But, you know, it was real quiet. Like, you know, during uh, Kavanaugh's, uh, you know, I heard uh, the Palatino talk about he shouldn't have went through that. But we were real quiet, but we all knew what was going on. Same thing with Diddy. He um, he beat up some rappers. I think he even slapped Drake. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess there's nasty yeah. and then there's nasty. And if you're the ringleader, so to speak. Uh, you well, yeah, he was. That's what he was the ringleader. He was, um, he was, he just. He, he's a billionaire, you know, but um, I think we all know when people are doing wrong, we all just need to start saying something um, or we get what we get, you know. But, yeah, I wanted to put that out there because I thought, like, um, a lot of people was getting canceled. It was like, oh, man, this is this cancel thing is real, man. I might be next, you know. <laughs> so I was like, okay, let's dial it back a little bit, you know. We don't want our heroes to get canceled. But, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's a lot of nastiness going on, going on out there, man. But, um yeah, Diddy's a bad guy, and uh, I don't support him. I always thought his music was mid, but I was just on the thing like, you know, let's not cancel everybody, you know, because right. like we just throwing out, you know, like 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 Trump, so he's has he hasn't been convicted of anything, you know, but we're not going to treat him like we're treating Diddy right now, are we? So. All right. Well, and we'll. Uh, I mean, we'll see where it goes too. Again. Uh, Diddy has not been arrested. The diddler is uh, not being directly accused by authorities just yet. Uh, but the raid is a pretty serious move, so we'll see. Yeah, well, Randall got it right. Uh, when they're doing what you, uh, they throw you away. So that's it. Well, I appreciate it, Mr. Pink. Mm -hmm. Let's go to line four. You're on there. Who's this? Hey, very quickly, this is East. Hey. I just want to be the first to say Diddy did not kill himself. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I, and I know this, I'm being a bit sardonic, but you know this, this kind of stuff. I mean, there are people who have really done bad things, and and I, it may bear out, man. If this cat's doing human trafficking and stuff like that, I, I right. hope that uh, he does time. But look, I I don't know, man. This 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 canceling stuff. When they're going to come after Eve? When they're going to come after Joey? Or God forbid, well, even Eddie? You I know? keep in mind that I, like, I literally, like, a show that I do can literally be canceled. So, and that's part of, of the gig. And it's one thing if you get fired. It's another thing if you get arrested for human trafficking. So there's different levels, right. let's say, of cancellation. Now, some people who right. don't deserve it are completely ruined. Uh, and that's always unfortunate. But um, I, I don't know. I think this is the way of the world, honestly. Uh, that people are going to yeah. have their opinions, the mob's going to say what they want and go where they want, and it ain't always just. That's right. That's right. Hey, great show, man. We'll talk to you. Appreciate it. He's 272-9228. If you want to get it on the program, that's 334-272-9228. The, the events is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. We'll be right back. Want to carry News Talk in your pocket? Download the News Talk 93.1 app from the App Store. Available on iPhone and Android. Never miss a moment. Download now. In Alabama, more than 200,000 of our family members and friends are living without health coverage. Often folks can't stay healthy enough to keep their jobs. We need to fix this. It's time for us to find a way to close the health care coverage gap so that folks can remain in their jobs. 
where there's a priority out there, we as Alabamians have always found a way to achieve it. Contact Governor Kay Ivey and let her know. Now is the time to close the coverage gap and cover Alabama. Paid for by the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network. Live, local talk, the River Region's most trusted voice for news and opinion. News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. Joey Clark. Welcome back. This part of the program brought to you by Bo Goodson and the Goodson Group. And they're at the Goodson Group. Bo and his team are ready to help you, whether you're looking to buy or sell a home here in the Montgomery and surrounding areas. Bo has been working in the River Region real estate market for over four decades, 40 plus years there working in this area. So he's seen it all, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And he, not only can Bo and the team there, the Goodson Group, help you with buying or selling property, they have fantastic management services available should you want to rent out your home, a rental investment, or converting your current home, uh, regular residence into a rental is a great idea in this market, but it can be a pain in the butt to manage yourself. Why not for a reasonable fee have the Goodson Group do that for you? And then the crown jewel there at the Goodson Group is the Bo Goodson Real Estate School. It's one of the most highly acclaimed real estate programs here in the great state of Alabama. Because, well, folks have gone on to great success. Like I said, Bo's seen it all. The good, the bad, and the ugly, he can teach it to you direct. So when you hit the ground running, whether you're a fully licensed realtor or just a more knowledgeable private player, well, you can thank the Goodson Group for uh, teaching you up in that way. You can always check them out online at thegoodsongroup.com or give them a call at 551-0225. That's 551-0225. Bo Goodson and the Goodson Group. Great sponsor here of News and Views. In the afternoon. Again, we're also continuing to live stream the show at the Joey Clark on X. Appreciate everybody watching there on X at the moment or Joey Clark live on YouTube. Be sure to like and subscribe. Putting out a lot of shorts. Uh, we're cutting big interviews that we do. And you can always go back and watch the live stream, scrub through commercials, and uh, get to exactly where you want to be. Or if you miss the show, you can always listen to the whole thing later. Now, just looking at images again here of this bridge, the Francis Scott Key bridge disaster, it's absolutely um, devastating. Absolutely devastating. And for those of you who didn't see the video, it was caught on video, and there's some aids to help explain exactly what you're seeing because it's a little dark. But this is the aftermath where it essentially crashed this massive cargo ship. You see those are shipping containers right there. It essentially crashed right into a support pillar of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. And disaster is the only word for what occurred there. Of course, there is going to be more updates, fallout, I'd imagine. Uh, we don't know the exact death toll yet, even though this happened hours ago. But uh, what a shame to see something like that. Apparently, there were heroes who were able to stop uh, a lot of vehicles from hopping on the bridge and saved a lot of lives by doing that. A few vehicles did go into the drink. And again, the uh, the actual death toll is not exactly clear, but uh, we shall see. We shall see um, before too long here. And you got to wonder about American infrastructure in general. Now, this seems like a genuine accident leading to disaster. Something malfunctioned on that vessel, on that ship, where the power just went out and they had no way of steering this thing. I believe they did call in a mayday to folks on the ground, but uh, you can't have this. If America is going to continue to be a world leader into the 21st century, this sort of stuff is happening way too often all around this country. And that's in spite of all the money that has been spent over all the years. Apparently it hasn't been enough. And yet we continue to be sinking further and further into debt as the interest payment, just the interest debt service payment alone is starting to eat up more and more of the federal budget. I'm sorry, but something, something very soon has to give. But we shall see when that happens. I'm not holding my breath waiting for that to happen as we saw with that recent uh, massive budget passing again it's you know to keep the government open and even i think some of the folks who voted for it would say this is not the way the process should be done i'm thinking of say senator Britt there but it's when are we going to get a better process 
when are we actually going to tighten our belts and get our house in order? Because right now it seems the house is uh, falling apart. And it's worse than falling apart. There are light switches that don't even turn on lights. So you're like, what is this even doing here? The bulb's not out. Like, the living room switch turns on the garbage disposal. Like, there's so much that has been built and added on to the house that is America that it's not only falling over. You don't even know why certain things are there or why these little compartments and secret passes. It's just a mess. What a mess. Now, I saw uh, Scott Beeson and Sky talking about this. But I don't know if y'all noticed, James Carville might have, well, called out the Democratic Party in the exact right way. James Carville, Democratic strategist, says Democrats are losing support because of, quote, preachy females controlling the party. Well, 48% of the people that vote are males. Do you mind if they have some consideration? I believe is the quote from Carville. Preachy females. Man, I want to get like Carville and uh, Jim Cornette in the same room. Let them just talk about it. I think they agree on politics. So, But Carville, who's now 79, said he suspects the issue with Joe Biden's polling numbers is that too many preachy females are controlling the Democrat Party. In an interview with the New York Times, Carville referred to the culture of the Democratic Party as don't drink beer, don't watch football, don't eat hamburgers. This is not good for you. The message is too feminine. Everything you're doing is destroying the planet. You've got to eat your peas. If you listen to Democratic elites, NPR is my go-to place for that. The whole talk about how women and women of color are going to decide this election, I'm like, well, 48% of the people that vote are males. Do you mind if we have some consideration? When discussing the president's poll numbers, Carville said, looking at them, this is like walking in on your grandma naked. You can't get the image out of your head. Wow. Wow. Well, I don't want to see Grandma or James Carp. You shouldn't be talking about people being naked, man. Like, I feel like he just hisses when he gets hungry. Hey, we got to hit this top of the hour break. But first, this part of the program brought to you by the new and improved Dylan Rings. Josh Ryder there at Dylan Rings. They're at 119 Brown Springs Road. Send me an Instagram post. The renovations, folks, are done. They're done. They've been hard at work behind the scenes all last week. They're now reopening. They're at Dylan Rings after a stunning remodel. So get by there. 119 Brown Springs Road. Get by there today. You don't even have to. It doesn't have to be today that you buy jewelry. But you got to see this place. And in fact, once you get in there, you're going to want to buy jewelry because you're like, this is elegant. This is an elevated experience right here. So join Dylan Rings for their grand reopening and be among the first to see their fresh new look. Don't miss out on the excitement. Just this photo I'm seeing on Instagram. On the gram is, uh, man, what a beautiful work, guys. Really great. And of course, Dylan Rings is a full-service jewelry shop. So not only do they have a great selection of jewelry items, they can also do repairs, appraisals, spa treatments, custom design, you name it, Dylan Rings can get it done. So get by there. See the new and improved Dylan Rings at 119 Brown Springs Road, and be sure to tell Josh and Leslie Ryder that Joey on the radio sent you. Broadcasting from the Riverside Chevrolet Master Control Center, this is WACV Kusada, News Talk 93.1 FM. When it's Chevy, it's Riverside. With SRN News, I'm John Scott. U.S. consumer confidence held steady this month, even as Americans are still concerned about high prices and feeling less optimistic about the short-term future. The conference board, a business research group, said that its consumer confidence index ticked down to 104.7 in March from a revised 104.8 in February. Consumer spending accounts for about 70% of U.S. economic activity. The Supreme Court heard arguments in its first abortion case since Conservative justices overturned Roe v. Wade two years ago. The question is the ease of access to a medication, Mifepristone, used last year nearly two-thirds of U.S. abortions, a decision expected by early summer. The Dow is ahead 80 points now, and the NASDAQ adding 42 points. This is SRN News. 
Donald Trump's indictment proves that saving America is not going to be easy. There are entrenched powers that are fighting this with everything they've got. They want to keep control over the country, the narrative, and the nation's money supply. Hi, I'm Lance Wall now. I'm a news analyst, a Christian author, and evangelical leader. I speak to millions of people every week, people just like you. You see, what the elites are doing is using inflation and government handouts and now central bank digital currencies to determine how they're going to control America. And that's why I recommend all Christians start a gold IRA from the Birch Gold Group, because physical precious metals are one of the few ways you can maintain control over your own savings. To get a free info kit on gold IRAs, text the word FAITH to 989898. Birch Gold Group is the only gold company I trust. Get their free info kit and you'll see why a gold IRA can help you. There are no strings attached. Text the word FAITH to 989898 and you're going to be blessed by taking action right now. Rich Thomas Weather, a service of Wiley Sanders Truck Lines, where dump truck drivers are in demand. Wiley Sanders is on the grow. We need dump truck drivers now. Call 855-77-9785. Well, hi, everybody. The risk of showers is fading away quickly for most of us, otherwise mostly cloudy. Temperatures today, upper 60s to around 70. Partly cloudy, cooler tonight, overnight low 48. Tomorrow, sunshine, 74 for a high on Wednesday. A little cooler Thursday. I've got us in the upper 60s with more sun. And then a beautiful Easter weekend forecast. Sunshine, 72, good Friday. Upper 70s Saturday, near or above 80 on Easter Sunday with more sunshine. From the Blue Water Weather Center, this is Rich Thomas. Whether you're buying a home or auto or consolidating debt, CBNS Bank's personal loans get you where you need to go. Go to cbsbank.com to find a location near you or apply online today. All loans subject to credit approval, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. From the Blue Water Broadcasting News Center, these are today's top stories. A third suspect has been arrested in the shooting death of 16-year-old Michael Cole, Jr., Montgomery police have charged 18-year-old Jarrell Brown with felony murder. Teenagers Nicholas Shepard and Nedvin Jones have already admitted being involved in the shooting death of Michael Cole Jr. on January 25th. The deadline to register to vote in Alabama's April 16th runoff is quickly approaching. Those who are not already registered and those who have moved to another voting place must register by Monday, April 1st. Voters can mail in a completed registration form, go to the County Board of Registrars, or register online. Stellantis is recalling nearly 318,000 Dodge and Chrysler automobiles because the side airbag inflators can explode and hurl metal fragments at vehicle occupants. The recall covers certain Chrysler 300 and Dodge Chargers from the 2018 through 2021 model years. From the Blue Water Broadcasting News Center, I'm Sky Mosley. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Alabama Home Mortgage. Alabama Home Mortgage, 567-4223. Visit them on the web at myalabamahomemortgage.com. NMLS number 1586368, an equal housing lender. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. The views and opinions of the following program are solely those of the host and other contributors. These do not necessarily represent those of Liberty Acquisitions 825, Blue Water Broadcasting, its management staff, or any advertisers. It's time for Montgomery's Conversational Radio Show. It's news and views on News Talk 93.1 FM. To join the conversation, call 272-9228. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that is an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. This is how you conduct yourself in a democracy. Joey Clark. Welcome back. 
into the program. Again, 334-272-9228 if you want to join in on the conversation. Watching live right now, it appears very soon, soon indeed, RFK Jr. will announce his running mate in the 2024 race. And, you know, often folks, uh, I've learned to ignore internet comments, especially from folks I don't know. But occasionally, a stranger will throw something at you that is uh, quite accurate. And he said, people need to stop thinking about the 2024 election as a binary choice between Trump and Biden. Because RFK Jr. is an actual player. The man is leaning on new media and podcasts hard. I think he's attracting a different type of person who probably hasn't voted for Democrats or Republicans for a long time. I think he is appealing to a lot of disaffected voters, people who feel politically homeless, for lack of a better word. So think of it, if you're going to think historically, like, say, Ross Perot. Now, Perot, it seems conventional wisdom is pulled from H.W. Bush. But who does RFK Jr. pull from? And when asked about this recently, are you worried about playing spoiler? He said, that's not how I'm thinking of this at all. I'm playing to win. And I think his hope is to get into a contested election, one where nobody gets the 270 electoral votes to actually be the next president of these United States. And what it then happens, if you can't get that 270 number, is you throw it into the House of Representatives and each state cited by their delegations, each state gets a vote. Be fascinating to watch what happens if it's thrown into the House of Representatives if a presidential election is actually thrown back into the Congress. Because in a lot of ways, what is that guy? Hold on, I got to pull up the RFK Jr. What is this Native American man doing there? Sir, 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 don't do that in public. Sir, what are you doing? Or step out from behind the... Oh, okay, he's beating a drum. Oh, thank God. Or what is that? Here, let's let's turn the sound on. So apparently that's what's happening at RFK Jr.'s rally. Everybody seemed pretty solemn there, though, as the man's performing that. So, um... No, like that angle, whoever is running the camera, stop it with that camera angle right there. Whoever's doing that, don't, no, don't do that. No, it's just, wow. Let's go to line one. You're on the air. Who's this? Red uh, Good afternoon, sir. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. Uh, just making money. It's always a good thing. Uh, and, uh. Let me uh, make a mention. Well, first of all, very quickly on the uh, Baltimore Bridge, mm -hmm. uh, the captain, you might have already said this, did not follow procedure. First thing he was supposed to do is drop his anchor. The first thing. And, mm -hmm. he, and he thought he could get power back on and avoid the thing, yeah. Well, yeah, no, for the rules of maritime rules say you lose power going into a port, you drop anchor. ASAP, and then you right. worry about your engine. Well, and you hope the anchor actually takes. Yeah, but you know, in a shallow port, by the right. time you're in port, I imagine your anchor is going to take. But they didn't do nothing. And I think they said it was going in at uh, 8 not miles per hour, what the hell am I talking about? Uh, the, next, the nautical miles. It was just probably pretty fast, around 10, 15 miles an hour. Uh, so, in global, is wonderful. So where we get container ships bringing Japanese cars over here to run our bridges down. <laughs> and, uh, and, and another uh, weird thing is uh, now a bunch, uh, and this is how they're going to do it, just like this will be a pandemic for the animals. Uh, all these cows coming down with bird flu, uh, tens of thousands of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's obviously a Asian avian flu. And, you know, uh, what do we have next? The chickens getting mad cow disease, Kelly. <laughs> I hate to be comical about it. That's the first thing that came to my mind. They go, okay, they tell us cow, 
uh, chickens got mad cow disease, they got the first flu. No more poultry and beef. Damn, that's a shame, guys. Y'all eat bugs for a while. They could pull that in one day. Wouldn't be a damn thing anybody in this country could do about it. Wow. So that, that's a reality because they already shut us down. So they don't have to worry about turning us into vegetarians just to uh, pollute our food. And who is, uh, I briefly got to look at Robert Kennedy's running mate, the woman. Who no, that's what made. people are claiming uh, he's going to pick her. But uh, we'll see. The actual announcement's about to happen here soon. Oh, good, good. I'm looking forward to it, buddy. Thank you very much. Roll Tide, Coach Trump. Appreciate it, Red Top. Uh, let's go to line three. You're on there. Who's this? Hey, this is Ed. Hey, Ed. How y'all doing? Good. Hey, in response to that last call, I know he was talking about the uh, pile and stuff. If I'm not mistaken, when they come into a port like that, we have our people, American uh, pilots that work for that port or that, that area, that control the ship while it's in there. Okay. Kind of like they do at the uh, docks. You know, they don't let just anybody ride through the Panama Canal. Sure. They take over the ship and drive it through. I'm just thinking that uh, I'm pretty sure that's what happens there, too. So we got to be looking more at our uh, our training instead of, you know, blaming Shang, Shang Ra La or whatever. Yeah, and uh, I mean, uh, I, man. I, I have to plead ignorance on this, but uh, we'll see who exactly is to blame for all this. All right, man. Y'all have a good day. Thank you, Ed. 272-9228. If you want to get in on the program again, that's 272-9228. This part of News and Views brought to you by James Cole and Cole Plumbing. And they're at Cole Plumbing. They're ready to help you with any of your plumbing needs. It could be you've got a burst pipe or just a leaky pipe. And you're wondering, oh, this is going to mean a lot of drywall needs to be cut out. Or maybe the leaks in your yard. So here's the beautiful thing. Cole Plumbing has this proprietary pipelining technology that allows them with precision and expertise to get the job done. That means they're not gonna have to dig up a huge hole if the leak is in your yard. They're not gonna have to dig up a huge trench finding the source of the leak. Or inside, they're not gonna have to tear out a bunch of drywall, leave a big muddy mess inside. Ugh, drywall, especially when it gets wet, it's just the worst. But maybe you don't have like that big emergency. It could be an everyday plumbing problem. Cold plumbing could help you there, like a clogged drain or low water pressure, maybe tree root invasion into your plumbing from that tree you've been watching grow along with you. Or it could be you want to upgrade to say a tankless water heater system or a taller toilet, or maybe you want to get real fancy and install a high-end like bidet or Japanese toilet. Cold plumbing can help you there. That number, 279-8919, that's 279-8919. And just remember folks, when you have trouble with your bowl, call on call. Now, uh, I want to share a little something that I wrote up for 1819news.com. My weekly column just came out this morning. The political elite will always cheat. Learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. I believe Pablo Picasso is a tribute to that fancy quote. Learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. Now, not to sound like Thomas Carlyle, but American political players today are either imbeciles or Machiavellians. In our decadent age, one either stupidly believes that traditional American ideals still hold practical sway, or one shrewdly sees that American politics is a wholly corrupt game, whereby cheating seems the only way to play. According to a recent Rasmussen poll, the vast majority of the political elite are choosing the latter, ready to set the murderous Machiavel to school while seeing themselves as far too clever to play by the rules. Scott Rasmussen called his survey's findings, quote, the most terrifying poll result I've ever seen. We asked voters, a thousand voters, to suppose there was an election and it was close, but your candidate lost, Rasmussen recently told the Daily Signal. And if their campaign team knew they could win by cheating and not get caught, not get caught, would you want them to do so? Rasmussen gives the result. Among voters, only 7% say they'd rather cheat than win. I wish it was 1% or 2%, but 7% is not bad. Among the elite 1%, 35% would rather cheat than win. Then among a group that we call the politically obsessed elite, 
people who are not only in the elite 1%, but they talk politics every day or they're in the business, 69% of them would rather cheat to win the election. Again, the top political 1% elite, based on Rasmussen's poll, 69% of them, nice, would rather cheat to win the election. Such a result may suggest to you that the American political system has grown dangerously corrupt. But that is far too generous. Corruption is the system. Corruption is the art of politics and practice, whereby the ruling elite make and break the rules as they see fit to fulfill their artistic vision. So who are these elites anyway? Well, Rasmussen provides an explanation. The elite 1% represent 1% of the population. They are extraordinarily influential. A heavy concentration of them went to one of 12 elite schools. The reason I bring that up is about half the policy positions in government, half the corporate board positions in America, are held by people who went to one of these dozen schools. Their views really play a large role in the country, and it all feeds into this elite 1%. They are in power centers. If you're thinking of who's shaping the mainstream media narrative, it's this group. You may be just as shocked as Scott Rasmussen, that the American elite are willing to admit they'll cheat to win in 2024 or any other year. You may also be surprised to find that in the same poll, 47% of the elite 1% of American voters believe the United States provides too much individual freedom. But why? Why the shock and surprise? The elite of this nation, even the founding generation, have never been innocent men free from vain ambition, corruption, and sin. Augustine's libido dominandi, the lust for domination in us all, has yet to skip a generation. When the colonists threw off the British yoke, they did not free themselves from man's depravity to man. Man's fallen state did not cease when the bomb fell on Japan, nor when Nazis, the Nazis, suffered ultimate defeat. Man was not redeemed by the fall of the Berlin Wall, nor did his history of wickedness come to an end with the Soviet Union's fall. Indeed, as long as political ideals have dripped from American lips, American politics has been a sordid art born of necessity and ambition. The difference in America today is that the corrupt art of politics is more crystal clear than ever before for the average man to witness. So crystalline, crystalline, that even the elite 1% are willing to admit they cheat. Why try to hide what anyone with a curious and keen eye can see anyway? What's the worry? What challenge could everyday Americans ever pose to the transparently corrupt political elite? Well, the more coldly crystallized a particular political form or fashion becomes, the more its spirit wanes until it turns so brittle, it beckons to be broken by the gentlest gust of pure wind. The best artists learn the rules like a pro, so that they may break the rules with subtlety, precision, and expertise. But when art is reduced to a set of tired rules, trends, processes, and stratagems, it will become such an obviously fragile thing that any non-artist, any bum off the street, will possess sufficient knowledge to shatter a work of art irredeemably. Brazenly and nakedly relying on political force and fraud will only sow more seeds of force and fraud in return. Individual virtue, imagination, and ingenuity will always win out over the rigged rules of an obvious, well-worn game. And the American political elite's art has become pretty darn obvious. Call me an imbecile or a Machiavellian as you please. But I truly believe that with the right spirit, everyday Americans will eventually find a way to cheat the political elite out of their cheating. He may not know whether he's coming or going, but whether you're going to work or coming home, Greg Budell is there. Mornings, 6 till 9, and afternoons, 3 till 6. Only on News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. What's your biggest investment? More than likely, it's your home. So treat it that way when you hire a painting contractor. With PBS Painting, there are no gimmicks, no $99 specials. 
It's quality painting and someone who treats your home with the same respect that you do. At PBS Painting, we have been painting for years and look forward to many more years to come. With PBS Painting, the job gets prepped properly, whether it's cleaning, scraping, or priming. We always use quality products, which is a must for a quality paint job. So if you're looking for a painter that doesn't need upfront money and is on the job at all times, then please give me a call. Scott Bowers and PBS Painting, 294-5122. That's PBS Painting, 294-5122. Look at some of our work on Facebook at PBS Painting Montgomery. I'm with Miss Dot at the Eastbrook Flea Market and Antique Mall. How was your anniversary sale, Dot? It was just wonderful, and I want to thank everybody that came out. It was a great time. It meant so much to me for it to be 30 years, and y'all just came out and made my day. Well, spring is almost here. Is Eastbrook ready? We're beginning to get the patio tables and chairs out. We've got so much there, it's hard to put it into a minute commercial. You just got to come see what we got. You know we've got three floors and 60,000 square feet, so just come see us because we probably got a sale or two going, and our merchandise is pretty reasonable, I think. We don't charge a commission to the vendors, and so our, our prices are able to be a little bit less than some other places. Give us those hours of operation. Monday through Friday, 10 until 6. Saturday, 9 until 6. And Sunday is 12.30 to 4.30. That's the Eastbrook Flea Market and Antique Mall 425 Coliseum Boulevard. So y'all come on by and see us. We'd love to have you. Are you tired of the mainstream media's biased reporting? Do you want to stay informed on the news that really matters to you? Look no further than 1819 News. At 1819 News, we bring you the latest in Alabama news, politics, sports, culture, and more. We've assembled a team of journalists with Alabama values dedicated to the truth and the truth alone. Visit us at 1819news.com today. That's 1819news.com. Subscribe to our newsletter. Honest News, Alabama Values. The Health and Wealth Show. The Health and Wealth Show. The show so nice, we said it twice. Weekday evenings at 6 on News Talk 93.1 WACV. The Health... Make it up, son. Joke's over, hey? This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Alabama Home Mortgage. Alabama Home Mortgage, 567-4223. Visit them on the web at myalabamahomemortgage.com. NMLS number 1586368 an equal housing lender. The River Region's News Talk Station. News Talk 93.1 WACV. News Talk 93.1 Joey Clark Welcome back to the program. This part of the show brought to you by Pest Pro Services. And they're at Pest Pro Services, Ashley and her team, that great team there, that growing team there at Pest Pro Services. Well, they're ready to help you with any of your pest control needs. And I suspect with all the spring time coming alive, and especially all this water that we're getting dropped on us, all this moisture soaking into the ground, along with temperatures rising, that you're going to have more pest control needs. So. Whether you're dealing with mosquitoes or termites, maybe it's a problem with fire ants, wasps, yellow jackets, including subterranean yellow jackets. Those things are just nasty. Pest Pro Services can help you with all of that. In fact, when you call them at 265-9990, be sure to ask about a free termite inspection. And the deal with termites is homeowner's insurance does not cover termite treatment or damage repairs. And treatment is much less expensive than damage repairs when it comes to termites so call a pest pro today ask about that free termite inspection and what they can do is they can essentially you say yeah let's get the treatment done they can lay down bait so when termites hit your property they're going to hit that bait first best pro will know and come out and take care of them but again you might as well get the yard treated for mosquitoes for fire ants especially if you have a big property so you have a pretty massive fire ant network underground Pest Pro Services is the place to go. Or maybe you're just looking for a great local pest control company that you can trust, run by local people who are always giving back to the community. That is Pest Pro Services. 
So again, that number, 265-9990. That's 265-9990. Or you can always go to ppsriverregion.com or just search Pest Pro Services on the Book of Faces today. And be sure to tell them that uh, that Joey fella on the radio sent you. And you want to know, call a pro. Pest Pro Services, great sponsor here of the show. Now, uh, I have to find myself in complete agreement with Glenn Greenwald this morning when I read this. And what he's referring to here, we'll play it, is a 60 Minutes interview. And so on 60 Minutes, they trotted out, what did they call her? A misinformation expert. Wait, you mean propagandist? Or wait, wait, misinformation expert. Do you mean like a censor? What is a misinformation, like an expert on misinformation, right? Wait, so she's a fact checker. Because if you're misinformed, it's not like you're doing anything dirty or wrong or nefarious. You're just wrong, man. You're just wrong. And this is why we need ladies like this, ladies with short hair and big glasses, I think I can pull off that look. Actually not. But we need ladies like this to tell folks that you're just misinformed, honey. You're just so wrong, America. Stop believing things that don't come from corporate news. Stop believing the Internet. But Glenn Greenwald goes on. He says, uh, misinformation expert is a fake credential. Yeah. It was invented after 2016 to disguise political censorship as an act of neutral science. And this is the game that is constantly being played. It is the myth of the non-political bureaucrat. Now, am I willing to believe there are some folks working within the bowels of the bureaucracy, whether in Washington, D.C., here in Montgomery, or even in small communities all over this wonderful nation? Sure, I'd imagine... There's some folks working in those bowels who really are just apolitical folks. But even for them, I would say this. Unfortunately, the job you've taken has a pretty inherent political aspect to it, given that you're being paid by taxpayers who are legally stolen from. So you should consider that uh, your paycheck is provided by people who are not giving up the money willingly, number one. Number two, let's leave aside, and I can, again, there might be some just apolitical people, especially like think of the military. There's some people who serve, they don't give a damn about the partisan politics, especially when they're actually in it. You know, the, you know what I mean? They're actually having to put their life on the line. So I, I, I grant that, that can't exist. But let's also be honest. There are a lot of folks who in the name of science whether you're talking epidemiology, virology, or you're talking the latest when it comes to the tech wars and AI and, well, all the algorithms used on social media. I mean, computer science is a real thing. Of course, of course, of course. Or it could be the science of running a library. All these folks like to say, I'm just a scientist. I'm just following the science. That, number one, that's not how it works. Number one. Number two, it's awfully convenient that some folks are given the credentials to say, I'm objectively right, without ever having to prove that they're right, without being tested that they're right. If you're so right, honey... If you're so right, doll, then why don't you stand up to scrutiny? Science only works when there's actually a clear give and take between scientists. And when you look at the history of science, the major breakthroughs, the epoch-breaking innovations in thought, they're often done by people you at least suspect. They're often done by people that... The academics who know how to play the game and get the right positions. I'm a dean. I'm a chair of this or that. Those folks don't like innovators because innovators often upset what you spent your whole life 
dedicated to. Your theory was just wrong. So if you want to claim to be objective, if you want to claim to be following the science, whether you're running a library or you're trying to stop the next pandemic, or you're trying to fight back the Ruskies and their damn dirty propaganda or what the Chinese commies are up to on TikTok, well, then why don't you actually prove your point? Instead of acting like petty kings and queens that actually don't hear anything but their own point of view and won't heed anything but their own point of view. So that brings me to this clip. I guess this inspired that entire rant. This is a misinformation expert. And uh, she's, she's really great at her job. 60 Minutes being so serious. 60 Minutes and the misinformation expert. And what 60 Minutes says here is uh, X, formerly Twitter, only responded to 30% of the notes from researchers flagging misinformation in posts. <gasps> wait, wait, wait. People in the community, in the marketplace of ideas, so to speak, 30, only 30% 30 of the time were notes from researchers flagging misinformation in posts heated. We're the misinformation experts. Everything we say, everything we do is correct. How dare you not listen to us? How dare you challenge us? Well, your authority is illegitimate, number one. Just because you have a government job and a government credential doesn't make you necessarily better than anybody else, in, even in your given field. You might be one of the best. But I'm sorry, not everybody who's sitting in the federal bureaucracy, certainly not in the bowels, is of the equivalent of the scientists that created the bomb in the Manhattan Project. It's just not the same at all. There are some incredibly impressive people out there. What, you're telling me millions of folks are all just experts? All just, no, 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 no. So that's what they're upset about in this post. Let's, uh, let's listen in together. Kate Starbird says the social media platforms also often ignored the researchers' suggestions. The statistics I've seen are just for the Twitter platform, but I, my understanding is, is that they responded to about 30% of the things that we sent them. And I think the, on the majority of those, they put labels. But just a third. But just a third, yeah. And do you suspect that Facebook was the same? Oh, and yeah. Wait, they're only listening to a look. It's not your job to police speech. Whatever happened to the First Amendment? Not your job. Nobody asked for it. You're just assuming this power. It really does remind me of high school. It reminds me of that just that stupid time in life where mediocre people have power over you. Nothing more dangerous than the average man or woman who's given undue power. But here's the beautiful thing, folks. If you scroll down that clip there, if you go to the actual 60 Minutes post, there is a community note on it. I guess it's been removed. But that got community noted saying that, well, we, uh, it's a community note. There's a give and take process. The community essentially decides. And it seems to be uh, running on all cylinders, in my humble opinion. Sometimes the decision comes back where it's like, well, that betrays my politics and my point of view. But this misinformation infrastructure is like we're talking with Judge Knapp, just an excuse to steal your freedom. Like so much of what the government does, they will try to scare the crap out of you and then demand your loyalty. Don't you want to be a good American? No, I'm kind of tired of your definition of good American. I thought in America, it means I could tell you to go kick rocks. Go away. Leave us the hell alone. Stop stealing from us. Stop sending our sons and daughters to die in pointless wars. And stop pretending like you're the moral elite that is able to force your will on the entire globe. So you're flirting with destroying the entire globe. The more you press this in Russia. Sorry, everything's now flowing together. Can't stand these folks. Bloody tyrants and cheaters, but of course they cheat. And they'll cheat and cheat and cheat again. Now that brings me to a man who's a little more sober than I am. I'm sober, but 
not sober, you know what I mean. This is Mike Benz. Now, Mike Benz has been uh, raised in prominence after a Tucker Carlson interview. But he continues to make the rounds, and he's been working, covering this, well, disinformation, misinformation infrastructure. He says here in this clip that disinformation was a military term to describe enemy propaganda in times of war. After 2014 and losing Ukraine, they started using it against civilian life. Yep, that's the pattern. Let's listen in together. Information in 2017. Actually, it started right after you know, Crimea in 2014 with this disinformation term. That was always a military term to describe enemy propaganda. You know, disinformation was not the sort of thing that a government would say its own citizens do. We would just call that ordinary course First Amendment protected discourse. But what what so they started with with you know Russian disinformation using this kind of national security predicate in 2017. But by 2018, it became very evident that um, that the Russia the Russia gate predicate could only go so far. So they rolled out and expanded it to misinformation and disinformation, and saying, well, mis misinformation, even if you even if it's not a lie, but you make an innocent mistake, that too is a threat to democracy. Uh, but then they quickly found that they were having a real problem. See, at the time, they were still using this fact checker method uh, for for uh, for flagging, and they had a problem, which is that a lot of the things that the government was trying to get the social media platforms to censor and government cutouts, like the NGOs and civil society firms that the government paid, were having trouble getting the platforms to take down enough misinformation because the fact checkers couldn't prove that half of what they were trying to take down was actually false. So they created a new category in late 2018, early 2019 called malinformation. And this is basically <laughs> what the lion's share of internet censorship now comprises. Malinformation is the idea that even if something is true, if it, if it ultimately leads people to a conclusion that uh, undermines public faith and confidence in a critical government initiative or undermines public faith and confidence in democratic institutions like the mainstream media, then that by itself uh, is is essentially the same thing as missing dis disinformation. I, wait, wait, wait. We gotta we gotta back that up. Wait. If it's true, but it doesn't play into the public narrative, which is really just private people pretending they speak for everybody else because they won a popularity contest, and half the time they didn't even win it. Good for you, jackasses, cheaters. So I gotta hear that again. So. Malinformation is true information that undermines a government narrative. Is this essentially admitting that uh, human beings can't handle the truth? That in fact, you have to constantly lie to them with noble lies going all the way back to Plato in order to keep them in lockstep? Well, it seems actually like in human history, every time a society starts believing a government's noble lie, they end up dead. A lot of the people will believe that lie. Never forget, the biggest purveyors of violence and disinformation on the planet are governments, including the U.S. government. But I got to hear this again. Take it away, Mike Benz. Tell me about malinformation again. Getting the platforms to take down enough misinformation because the fact checkers couldn't prove that half of what they were trying to take down was actually false. So they created a new category in late 2018, early 2019 called malinformation. And this is basically what the lion's share of internet censorship now comprises. Malinformation is the idea that even if something is true, if it, if it ultimately leads people to a conclusion that uh, undermines public faith and confidence in a critical government initiative or undermines public faith and confidence in democratic institutions like the mainstream media, then that by itself uh, is, is essentially the same thing as missing dis disinformation and should be mm. treated as such by the platforms. This is a very, very dirty trick that basically operates the way a con game does. You know, a con game, the con there stands for confidence. And what they're doing is they're saying it undermines confidence when people are able to articulate true statements. In fact, one of the things that Just the News helped, uh, helped Foundation for Freedom Online break, uh, if you recall, about a, almost a year and a half ago now, was a DHS 
cybersecurity video, you know, from the from the CISA sub agency, which said it was doing cybersecurity, but was in fact doing cyber censorship. An obscure little DHS uh, cybersecurity agency put out a six minute YouTube video instructing a young cartoon protagonist named Susan to report her own Uncle Steve for disinformation on Facebook because Uncle Steve cited true CDC data to make the argument that COVID was no more fatal than the flu. So they were not arguing that Uncle Steve was wrong. He was citing CDC data, but it was a malinformation because it had the effect of undermining public faith and confidence in the severity of the COVID pandemic. And by the way, it's one thing with Uncle Steve posting that stuff, he's undermining public faith and confidence. Well, how do you bolster public faith and confidence? Especially if you're a bunch of totalitarians who have just, I guess, read Aldous Huxley, so now you're just not as heavy-handed as the ones of old. You use creature comforts and other sorts of numbing abilities to get people to not pay attention. But how, if you have a more totalitarian mindset, or you ha care nothing for actual individual human liberty, how do you bolster public confidence in a mission like that? You undermine private confidence. You pit friend against friend, children against parents, husbands against wives, uncles against nieces. Now, I was reminded of this uh, reading a few months back, uh, Michael Malice's fairly new book, The White Pill. It's a harrowing book, also brilliantly, I think, framed and put together. A lot of tough research went into that book. It's the history of the Soviet Union, but presented in a way where the good guys win eventually. And it is harrowing. But skipping over, say, some of the worst parts, the t parts about torture, there are ways to make people talk, and I just won't even repeat right now. It's going through my head. I'm not going to repeat it. Skipping ahead to, say, the Stasi in East Germany, or throughout a lot of the Soviet reign, even in Mother Russia. It wasn't just the boot on the neck like Orwell said. Or it wasn't even just numbing people with drugs and rock and roll and sex and dazzling spectacles. Breaking news. Look at that movie. Don't think about your life. No, what they found is that everyday people, in order to feel important, in order to feel like they're of higher status and doing the right thing, will turn on each other for nothing, for a pat on the back, or just to save their own skin when they perceive a threat. Do not underestimate how tyranny sneaks into your life. And I think one of the most insidious ways it does it, and it does go all the way back to ancient Greece and Plato, is you separate the individual from family. You make man's life about the public life. Your private life is of little to no concern. You're probably a brute and a beast if you're so concerned with private life. And when family members or friends are informing on one another, that's an awful place. That's what Mike Benz just said. Here's a tutorial on how to call out your family member, because he's just so wrong. Cheaters and tyrants all. Liars as well. 272-9228 if you want to respond to anything I just said. Again, we have Caroline Dobson coming in at two. I, uh, I'll try to get all my negative emotion out, not directed at Caroline. She does not deserve that. But uh, I look forward to talking to her. So I keep saying it to him blue in the face. This government, most of what they do is not legitimate, not on a moral basis, not on a constitutional basis. Their only legitimacy is their fear and force. And their ability to get you to turn on the people that you might otherwise love. I've got to hit a break. 
But first, let's talk about something crucial to family. And that's your home. Home ownership. And there at Alabama Home Mortgage, Kim Williams and Madeline Cannon, they've been helping so many families here in the River Region real estate market in Montgomery and the surrounding areas. And they're actually even serving folks out of state. They really are expanding. They do amazing work. And when you work with Kim and Madeline, you're actually working with local folks that you can trust who will get to know you, understand your goals in owning a home, and they're going to get you the best possible deal. Or maybe you're stuck under a mountain of credit card debt or other types of debt, or you want to reinvest in yourself or your family. Well, they can set you up with a great refinance deal. And if you're a veteran, you have to call Alabama Home Mortgage. I'm telling you, like it's required because they know the latest with the VA home loan programs. And if you've not taken advantage of these benefits, you earn through your service veterans. You need to call Alabama Home Mortgage today. That number, 567-4223. That's 567-4223. Or you can always apply online at myalabamahomemortgage.com. There is a difference in mortgage companies like Kim and Madeline. Show you how it's done. NMLS number 1586368. Equal housing lender. We'll be right back. Want to carry News Talk in your pocket? Download the News Talk 93.1 app from the App Store. Available on iPhone and Android. Never miss a moment. Download now. Make 2024 the year you break away from the chain stores and join us here at Adams Drugs. We value your business and want to provide you the best customer service at the lowest possible price. We've been serving up excellent customer service here in the River Region for over 62 years. I made the swap to Adams Drugs and I couldn't be happier. Having a job and then getting three kids to all of their activities keeps me busy. I don't have an hour to waste waiting on a prescription. At Adams, they know me and my family. I get in and out in minutes, and when I can't get by Adams, they'll bring the prescription right to my door. What are you waiting for? Come in to Adams Drugs and let us earn your business. Our friendly and personal staff will talk with you and answer any questions you may have about your prescriptions. Your satisfaction is our number one goal. Visit us at adamsdrugs.net for the location nearest to you. Adams Drugs is your local independent Health Mart pharmacy. Health Mart, taking the time to listen and care. Rich Thomas Weather, a service of Wiley Sanders Truck Lines, where dump truck drivers are in demand. Wiley Sanders is on the grow. We need dump truck drivers now. Call 855-77-9785. Rich Thomas Weather. Well, hi, everybody. The risk of showers is fading away quickly for most of us, otherwise mostly cloudy. Temperatures today, upper 60s to around 70. Partly cloudy, cooler tonight, overnight low 48. Tomorrow, sunshine, 74 for a high on Wednesday. A little cooler Thursday. I've got us in the upper 60s with more sun. And then a beautiful Easter weekend forecast. Sunshine, 72, good Friday. Upper 70s Saturday, near or above 80 on Easter Sunday with more sunshine. From the Blue Water Weather Center, this is Rich Thomas. John Bobo with Capital Tractor. Got a lot of jobs to do this spring? Save now on Kubota's BX23S tractor loader and backhoe combo at Capital Tractor and check off that to-do list. Powering Alabama, Kubota and Capital Tractor, Montgomery, Brundage, and Greenville. Hi, this is Bo Goodson from the Goodson Group. Selling a home in the River Region in this market takes some planning and preparation to be successful. Here are some steps to take to get your home sold fast. Remember the five P's. Prepare the home, fresh coat of paint inside and out, and complete any repairs needed. Professionally clean the home. A deep cleaning of floors, cabinets, windows, and blinds will leave a great impression for future buyers. Provide a home warranty for the buyer to give the buyer peace of mind after the closing. Provide a closing cost allowance for the buyer to help them be able to afford your home. Price your home to sell, not sit. A comparative market analysis from a local realtor will demonstrate what other properties have sold for in your neighborhood. Well-priced homes sell faster with less hassle. Houses are selling fast and sellers are getting top dollar. For all the answers, call Bo Goodson at the Goodson Group, 221-2883 or 551-0225. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Alabama Home Mortgage. Alabama Home Mortgage, 567-4223. Visit them on the web at myalabamahomemortgage.com. NMLS number 1586368, an equal housing lender. Live local talk, the River Region's only 24-hour News Talk FM station. News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV.
Joey Clark. Welcome back to News and Views in the Afternoon. Or as we're calling it online, Joey Clark Live. That's the name of the channel on YouTube. Joey Clark Live. Like and subscribe. Whether you like the show or even if you don't like me and you want to give me hell, I'm fine with that. Or you can always watch the show on the X platform, formerly known as Twitter. The site formerly known as Twitter, at the Joey Clark. Again, 334-272-9228 if you want to get in on the program. Now, Truth Social is going public, folks. And it's I think it's going to be trading under DJT, under Donald Trump's initials. What, $6 billion valuation? But shares of Digital World Acquisition Corp soared 35% after a court sharply reduced the bond former President Donald Trump has to pay to appeal a New York civil fraud ruling, as we were talking about with Judge Knapp at the top of the show. The ruling came after the approval of a merger between the shell company and the social media group owned by former President Donald Trump. Shares in the merged company are set to begin publicly trading Tuesday under the ticker symbol DJT, Trump's initials. Under the deal's current terms, Trump will not be allowed to sell shares in the company for at least six months. Wow. So now that there's less of a burden with this government theft of this bond that was being imposed on Trump, just so he could keep his properties, after yeah, it's just such a nonsense case, uh, the value of this new publicly traded company is rising like crazy. They'll be again publicly trading today, so uh, we'll see where that is. It could be a massive boost, at least on paper, to Trump. He's expected to own 80 million shares, which could be worth more than $3 billion or more in the new company. Wowza. That is um, it's a heck of a thing right there. And by the way, Bitcoin continues to climb like gangbusters. Uh, it is kind of remarkable to see how Bitcoin is growing again. And I think this is, you know, I'm not giving you necessarily financial advice. I think it's not too late, folks. I'll put it that way. It's not too late whatsoever for you to invest a little bit of your money. Or if you do your own research, maybe you want to put a lot of your money in. But do your own research. I highly recommend uh, listening. Some of the old interviews, even from a few years back, are still great. And I think because they're a few years old, is uh, the CEO of MicroStrategy, Michael Saylor. I think that guy is uh, pretty spot on. But don't just listen to him. Do your own research across the board. But for instance, can you imagine if instead of getting you know, a billion dollar or so bond to build a new prison, uh, which, well, it was supposed to be two prisons, as we were talking about yesterday with Will Barfoot, now it's only going to really cover the cost of one. If Alabama had just taken all that funny money, that monopoly money printed up by the feds and handed out during COVID and bought a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. Now, the people in this state and certainly not the players over on Goat Hill would have ever gone for that. I know I'm, I'm talking crazy here. But I think it would have been, well, obviously, looking at the numbers now, would have been a great bet. And even if the numbers weren't running up just at this moment, I think it would have been a great bet. And you have what's fascinating other nations around the world now getting in on this game. It is, I think, a great way to save your people's wealth through time without it being taken from you by, say, the U.S. government printing more money. So El Salvador, the Cule. El Salvador has purchased over 5,700 Bitcoins to date at an average price of $42,700. With Bitcoin recently surging past 70 grand, the country's holdings are up nearly 80 million. And uh, Michael Saylor, by the way, has been, he put a lot of his company's money into Bitcoin. And it's now, I think, working out for him. The returns have been remarkable. And here's where I'm coming from. There's going to be a thing called the halving, where essentially the production of new Bitcoin through the mining process, like, essentially be cut in half. So the supply is going to become even more scarce 
as new coins come online through the mining. But can you imagine if a massive company, you're already seeing BlackRock, Fidelity, all these other ones, I think Grayscales is one of the biggest, through these ETFs, are now offering Bitcoin to institutional investors and institutional money. Can you imagine if Apple, even though they're under a lawsuit now under the Antitrust Act by the DOJ, if Apple parked some of their massive cash reserves into Bitcoin? Not only would it be good for Apple, it'd be good and great for Apple shareholders. And this very well could be the wave of the future. And if that's the case, we can look at the exact spot price right now for Bitcoin. If that's the case, Bitcoin's a little over 70000 $70,233.42. It'll change here in a few seconds. You're talking not, oh, it's going to grow 100. It's going to go to 140, 150. Now, I'm not talking about 100% over the next 5, 10 years. You're talking about like a 10x. Talking massive growth. If this new technology that, again, if you're interested in this sort of thing, do your own homework. There are so many resources right now. It is not too late to understand where this is going. But if this technology becomes the main way for people to store value across time without having to invest in properties, without having, you know, out having to invest in, you know, resources, natural resources and the like. Why is it all these rich people buy all this stuff? Because, well, they, if they're just sitting on their money in the bank, they're losing money. They're losing wealth. But if there is now a digital form of property that allows you to store wealth across time, it'll be the hardest, soundest form of money ever created by man, even better than gold. That's a good thing to put a little bit of a bet on. I don't suggest, well, anything. Again, make your own decision. And I don't suggest selling the house or mortgaging out the house to do something like that. But even if you got a little cash laying around, 20 bucks, 100 bucks, like it's a savings account, just put it away. As the cool kids on the internet say, stack sats, satoshis, and watch it grow. 272-9228 if you want to get in on the program, and I believe, again, Caroline Dobson, candidate for Congress in the brand new Alabama District 2, will be joining us any moment now. Before I hit the top of the hour, this part of the program, again, brought to you by Montgomery Men's Health. And, well, if you're a man, and especially if you're getting a little older, in your 40s, 50s, 60s, you naturally don't produce as much testosterone. I mean, that's just a real fact. And it's nothing to deny, put off, be ashamed about. Don't be embarrassed. And I get that fellas, even in their 50s and 60s, but certainly 20, 30-something-year-old men, don't like going to the doctor. I am a man. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. But Montgomery Men's Health was created to take care of guys just like us. So if you're lacking motivation, energy, you're always tired, including seeing a decrease in your sex drive, feel like you're walking through your life in a fog, well, knowing whether you have low T is huge in combating some of these issues. There are a lot of guys walking around who don't know they, in fact, have low testosterone and the providers of montgomery men's health will conduct a testosterone focused lab workup plus a consultation for only 99 dollars and they have low t treatments there at montgomery men's health that can truly change lives men can experience higher energy better gains in the gym brother better mental clarity improved sleep patterns a faster metabolism you usually even notice an increased libido so, fellas, you can actually book the same day that you call. Time to feel amazing and hit your goals this year. That number, 440-3663. That's 440-3663. Or go to MontgomeryMensHealth.com to book your appointment today. Broadcasting from the Riverside Chevrolet Master Control Center, this is WACV Kusada, News Talk 93.1 FM. When it's Chevy, it's Riverside. <laughs> With SRN News, I'm John Scott. The Supreme Court seems likely to preserve access to the medication mefepristone. A consensus appeared to emerge in arguments that the pro-lifers who challenged the FDA's approval of the medication and subsequent actions to ease access to it lack the legal right or standing to sue. At least six people remain missing after a container ship lost power and rammed into a major bridge in Baltimore causing the span to buckle into the river below. The ship's crew 
issued a mayday call just moments before the crash took place and knocked down the Francis Scott Key Bridge. President Biden has won Missouri's primary. Biden's win in the state was never in doubt. On Wall Street, the Dow is ahead 80 points now, but the Nasdaq up 52. This is SRN News. Biden has started tracking Christians like cattle. Yes, you heard it right. He pressured banks to tag transactions for certain keywords. One of them is Holy Bible. It's a horrifying and creepy attack on our religious freedoms. It's made possible by a digital financial system that makes you a sitting duck. But you do have other options. I recommend a physical gold IRA from Birch Gold Group. I'm Lance Wallnow, a news analyst, a best-selling author, and evangelical leader to people who cherish their financial independence. The Precious Metals IRA can help you avoid the scrutiny of Biden's anti-Christian bureaucracy while also preserving your retirement savings. To find out more, get your free info kit on gold IRAs by texting the word FAITH to 989898. Birch Gold Group is the only gold company I trust. Get their free info kit and see how a gold IRA can help you. Text FAITH to 989898. There are no strings attached. So text FAITH to the number 989898 right now and take action to protect your own prosperity. Weather is brought to you by the Johnny Adams Law Firm. I'm Johnny Adams with the Johnny Adams Law Firm, Alabama's personal injury law firm, wishing you a fabulous day and a blessed evening. Stay weather alert. Well, hi, everybody. The risk of showers is fading away quickly for most of us, otherwise mostly cloudy. Temperatures today, upper 60s to around 70. Partly cloudy, cooler tonight, overnight low 48. Tomorrow, sunshine, 74 for a high on Wednesday. A little cooler Thursday. I've got us in the upper 60s with more sun. And then a beautiful Easter weekend forecast. Sunshine, 72, good Friday. Upper 70s Saturday, near or above 80 on Easter Sunday with more sunshine. From the Blue Water Weather Center, this is Rich Thomas. For the lowest prices around on flooring and DIY flooring installation supplies, Budget Floors and More is your new best friend. Luxury vinyl plank, carpet, ceramic tile, floor installation supplies, and more with prices lower than the big box stores. Budget Floors and More, Hunter Lane, across from Delray to Publix. 1819 News. U.S. Senators Tommy Tuberville and Katie Britt are co-sponsors to a resolution that was introduced into the U.S. Senate. That resolution condemns the government of Nicaragua for arresting 13 ministry workers that are connected to Mountain Gateway. That organization was founded by two Alabama natives and recently conducted large evangelistic meetings in Nicaragua in the fall of 2023. Since those events, the Nicaraguan pastors have been arrested and jailed and charged with money laundering without being given any legal documents. The resolution calls the government's actions unjust and a violation of religious freedoms. Tuberville and Britt are also calling on the Biden administration to issue targeted sanctions against the Nicaraguan government. I'll be back with more Alabama stories after this. Are you enjoying 1819 News? If so, consider joining 1819 News as a member. As a nonprofit news organization, we depend on the support of Alabamians like you. Memberships start out as little as $5 a month, and you'll get access to exclusive content only offered to our members. You'll be supporting independent journalism done by people who cherish Alabama values. Become a member today by visiting 1819news.com and clicking Become a Member. That's 1819news.com and click Become a Member today. The Baldwin County 911 Center now has a new director. Kirsty Stams has been working for 29 years in public safety. She started out in Gulf Shores as a dispatcher and has currently been acting as executive director of the Mobile County 911 Center. Stams will be stepping into the directorship after the Baldwin County 911 board chose not to renew the contract with the former director. Changes at Nakalula Falls are completed in time for spring break and tourists, the city leaders of Gadsden, hope to see an economic impact as a result of these new upgrades, which include steps down to the falls and a suspension bridge that crosses over the creek, creating a circular pathway. I'm Andrea Tice. For more news affecting Alabamians, go to 1819news.com. And while you're there, subscribe to the daily newsletter. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Cole Plumbing, 279-8919. Cole Plumbing is number one in the number two business. You don't have to dig a hole. They have proprietary pipelining technology. Ask them about their tankless water heaters. Remember, when you have trouble with your bowl, call on Cole. 
This is Scott Trout of Cordell and Cordell. There are a lot of great dads out there. Sometimes those dads get divorced. For more than 30 years, we have represented men in divorce, confronting the pitfalls that could devastate your finances or harm your family relationships. While every situation is different, our goal is to get the best outcome for you and your kids. Set up a consultation and take the first step. For matters in Tennessee, visit CordellCordell.com. 200 West Martin Luther King Boulevard, Suite 1000, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37402. No representation is made that the quality of legal services to be performed is greater than the quality of legal services performed by other lawyers. The views and opinions of the following program are solely those of the host and other contributors. These do not necessarily represent those of Liberty Acquisitions 825, Blue Water Broadcasting, its management, staff, or any advertisers. It's time for Buck Covering's conversational radio show. It's news and views on News Talk 93.1 FM. To join the conversation, call 272-9228. But, to, but to, beyond that, you have to teach people how to de-escalate circumstances. De-escalate. So instead of anybody coming at you and the first thing you do is shoot to kill, you shoot them in the leg. There's... Hold on to your butt. Joey Clark. Welcome back to News and Views in the Afternoon. Or as we're calling it online, Joey Clark Live. Now, without further ado, we have on the line candidate for Congress, the brand new Alabama District 2. She is running for the Republican nomination, is competing in a runoff that will be coming up on April the 16th. We have Caroline Dobson. Hey, Caroline, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing great, Joey. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, thank you for being on the show. So where all have you been over the last few days uh, traveling around the district? Uh, it's more like where haven't I been? Um <laughs> been in Washington County, Clark, Conecuh, Mobile, obviously Montgomery, and uh, my husband and I and two daughters um, live live in Montgomery during the week, try to spend the weekends in Monroe County where my family farms, um, headed to Pike County tomorrow and Russell County, um, so yeah, just um, all over. <laughs> now, is there a particular issue or as you travel around also certain news items that people keep bringing up with you? Yeah, well, I think, you know, on a, on a national level, certainly the border is um, such a deep concern for so many of us here in the district um, and just so many of the ancillary issues. Obviously, the, the fact that we have um, an estimated 8 to 10 million um, illegal aliens that have come across the border since Biden took office, um, also the drugs, the fact that um, over 200 Americans a day die of fentanyl overdose, uh, the foreign enemy agents since January 1, it's estimated that over 20,000 just Chinese nationalists, so not, not even talking about Somalis, Palestinians, just Chinese nationalists, 20,000 of them have come across our southern border. Of course, crime, um, the Lake and Riley tragedy. Um, so the border is, is definitely um, first and foremost in the minds of a lot of, a lot of folks. Um, you know, another issue that pervasive, regardless of whether I'm in a city or a small town, is the mental health crisis. Um, you know, there is, is truly not an adequate avenue or mechanism for dealing with the mentally ill in our communities, um, and that's affecting um, safety, uh, jail overload, um, and also just, you know, the fact that we're, we're stigmatizing these folks instead of, instead of having the, the resources and the um, avenues for for treating them appropriately i mean that's what probate judges are talking about mental health sheriffs are talking about mental health but for instance in the mobile jail which is designed to hold 1100 inmates they have close to 1500 over 20 percent of those are on psychiatric medication um they'll be put in jail and they'll they're you know and then medicated and then they'll get you know kind of back to it to a healthy state then they're released and then, you know, without accountability, without um, any sort of treatment, then they, they get off kilter and, and self-medicate with illegal drugs, and then, and then they're back in the jail again. Right. <laughs> so um, it's really a vicious cycle, and again, isn't, isn't a city-only or a rural community-only. It, it impacts um, communities throughout this district, and we've really got to fight to find a better solution there. Well, and, you know, you led into one question I wanted to ask you, uh, especially with the mental health angle. One of the, say, population cohorts, one of the groups 
most prone to, I think, mental health issues and substance abuse are veterans who are coming back. In particular, you're seeing with veterans uh, who served in Iraq and Afghanistan for many years, many tours of duty. And one thing I, I hear, and sometimes I hear from folks who I know quite well, are some horror stories that come out of the VA. Um, and it's oh, yeah. and it's so bad sometimes that you can't even share it publicly because it's so personal. But I, I hear these stories time and time again over the years. And I, a big part of you know being a member of Congress and representing a district is constituent services. Do you have a plan for setting up uh, constituent services that would help out folks who especially have trouble with, say, something like a VA hospital in their time of need? Oh, absolutely. That is a huge priority of mine. And, um, you know, and I've talked to veterans throughout the district, especially veterans in our rural communities. Um, you know, they're being sent in Washington County, for instance. I was talking to a vet there who, who has, he gets sent to Biloxi um, for treatment and doesn't get adequately reimbursed for mileage. Fortunately, he is able to drive himself, but so many of our veterans um, either, you know, uh, lack the, the means or the family members or friends to take them all over Kingdom Come. And, um, you know, the way that our, our veterans health um, in, in the VA is organized right now is incredibly inefficient. Um, also, the fact that, you know, we have rural hospitals and healthcare centers that are, that are struggling. Um, we really need to streamline the process um, and de bureaucratize mm. <laughs> um, what our veterans have to go through with respect to just seeking basic, reliable health care. You know, they have to jump through so many hoops. Um, again, back back to the example in Washington County, there is there's a, a person who comes for two hours a week on Thursday morning to try to help them fill out their paperwork. But if you have a need that arises, um, you know, on, on the other six days of the week or another time, uh, you know, outside that Thursday morning window, um, a lot of veterans are, are isolated and unable to, to get the help that they need. Often, the, uh, especially when it comes to veterans' mental health, um, there are waiting periods of up to 90 days. So, and, and also the fact, um, I spoke with a group called Vets Recover that's created a facility in, in Mobile, but often our veterans are the least likely to, to seek help when they need it because they're self-sufficient, they're strong-willed, and they're trying to figure it out themselves. So a lot of them are truly truly desperate when they actually do reach out for help and then we're making them wait weeks and months um, to actually get access uh, to that help to that help um, so it's it's, uh, it's really just been a, a vicious cycle we've got to focus our attention on that that will also um, have an impact on our military morale you know our military right. morale is at one of its lowest points and I have to believe that some of that is attributable to the fact that folks that are actively serving see how we're treating those who have given their lives and, and given their up their careers to serve our country, um, you, you can't look at how our veterans are treated and, and look forward to that treatment once you're no longer in active duty. And again, folks, we're talking to Caroline Dobson. She is running for Congress. You can go to Dobson for Congress, F-O-R, Dobson for Congress dot com and see where she is on the issues. In fact, I'm looking at Dobson for Congress dot com and I'm seeing under uh, pro-life. Uh, it, I know you're pro-life, but I just want to read one sentence. From conception, every child deserves the chance to fulfill their potential and contribute positively to our society from conception. And uh, being raised a Roman Catholic, that, that makes sense to me. But the big, uh, <laughs> a big case in, the, uh, in front of the Supreme Court came out today, the New York Times headline, Wall Street Journal also reporting on it. Uh, the headline reads, Most Supreme Court justices seem skeptical of effort to curtail abortion pill access. And, and we'll see what the courts will actually decide, but this is over, say, telemedicine or mail order pills that are even still being administered here in states like Alabama with probably the most dogged pro-life and anti-abortion laws on the books in the nation. So uh, what do you think about this uh, current argument where the FDA has made this available more over the counter I think they made their decision, and uh, I know you haven't had time probably to read the judges' opinions or hear these oral arguments that were presented today, but what's your sense of this particular aspect of the issue? Yes, you know, I feel like, you know, we have got, we've got to protect life. Life absolutely begins in the womb, and, um, you know, we, I, I feel like just the, you know, those of us in the pro-life community um, for so long because of the mainstream media, because of the left, we've just been forced 
to to defend our stance, our stance, and and you know our and, and the truth um, as you know being um, you know an extreme position, but it's not. You know, as you said, you know, um, I you can you can read the Bible, and you know, I knit you together in in your mother's womb. It's uh, very clear that that's where life begins, and I think it's it's time that we um, who do value and want to protect life um, really bring to the attention of the public um, what the Democrats are and what the far left is doing on this issue. The fact that in 2019, uh, the Born Alive Act in um, the U.S. Senate, which would have just basically provided that any child born in a hospital under any circumstance, any child born alive in a hospital is entitled to basic medical health care. Right. Pretty simple, right? right. <laughs> um, and all but two Democrat senators voted against that bill. So if you're, you know, I, 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 um, I frankly am just kind of fatigued of, of um, acting as if, you know, um, what I believe and and being pro-life is extreme because it's not what extreme. What is extreme is is the far left who are, you know, in certain states advocating for laws that would allow for abortions up to the minute before birth. Um, it's truly heinous, and we've got to got to start talking about what they're doing, what they're advocating for. Now, one issue you might have heard me while you're on hold, I was telling folks when it comes to, in particular, Bitcoin, it's not too late to at least jump into the game. Uh, what is your sense of this emerging new technology, whether it's Bitcoin or any of these other cryptocurrency or blockchain technologies? Do you think these have a role in, uh, say, a free economy here in the United States? I think they do, and, and the fact that they are, um, you know, kind of, I guess, impervious to inflation, given that there is, a, you know, a finite um, supply, I right. think, is attractive. Also, um, the fact, you know, the, the blockchain um, nature of that, I think, is also, you know, kind of appealing to me as far as um, just kind of the, the generation and subsequent acquisition of uh, cryptocurrency. Um, I will also say too, there's some real opportunities for Bitcoin mining in this in District Two. Um, I, you know, a couple of years ago, I, I there and I don't know kind of what the current status is, but I heard about a potential Bitcoin Bitcoin mining site in Connecticut County. Um, so you, you know, some of these areas, um, you know, that again, where like Monroe County, where I'm from, where you know we've had the loss of of some certain industries. I think um, you know not only as a currency, is, is cryptocurrency um, attractive on some levels, but also as a potential um, investment opportunity and, and uh, job provider in this district, it's huge. I think also as we have more and more um, failed governments um, throughout the world and, you know, there's more global crisis, the fact that, you know, you can, um, you know, if, if you are in a, in a country that's attacked by China or, um, you know, in a, in, in a country, a nation that's, in, invaded by Russia, you can leave with a thumb drive and, you know, have, have the resources to start over again um, somewhere else is, um, I think, also attractive, certainly to those that live um, in nations that might be subject to um, aggression by some of the, you know, evil enemy superpowers that are that are rising due to the <laughs> weakness of the Biden administration. <laughs> well, uh, I've asked a lot of uh, folks run for office and current office holders that question. Uh, fantastic answer. Uh, great. That's th that answer made me very happy, Carolee. Now, uh, I think a big issue in 2024 uh, will continue to be what does it mean to be a conservative? I think Donald John Trump, uh, for better or for worse, kind of blew up the old Republican Party uh, that folks might remember even during the Bush years. And there are a lot of arguments uh, across the board, uh, across issues. So uh, I'm just asking you straight up, what does it mean to be a conservative today in 2024? Well, to me, um, what it means to be a conservative is to believe um, that the, the bigger our government is, the less incentivized um, the average citizen is, is to, to not only work hard, but to take on being engaged in the community and making a difference. And, and, you know, um, exercising the hard work and humility of our forefathers. So, um, you know, and I think um, in a lot of ways, um, Donald Trump upending the apple cart was a good thing. Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't think the Republican Party just should be those who, who go to a country club. Right. <laughs> it, it really, you know, if you look at, at really the core 
um, ethos of what limited government and and hard work and uh, fiscal responsibility, frugality, um, you know, those belong to all of the American people and, and like how I grew up, you know, I, I um, grew up in a, in a small community and my parents both um, worked outside the home, um, each over 20 miles away from where we lived and we also had a farm um, that we had to take care of too um, after, after the full day's work was done and so um, we just need to get back to, to focus on being productive and, and viewing citizenship as a responsibility as well as a set of rights. Well, amen uh, to that. Amen. And uh, before we get out of here, if folks are liking what they're hearing, they want to support you in this runoff, uh, April 16th, folks, how can they uh, do so, Caroline? Yes, yes. Please go to www.dobson, that's D-O-B is in Bravo, S-O-N, F-O-R, Congress, DobsonforCongress.com. We also have accounts on Instagram, Facebook, um, X, and Truth Social, all of which are Dobson for Congress. Uh, But always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Hopefully we'll be there in person with you next time. Well, appreciate it. Thank you. And Caroline Dobson, candidate there for Congress. Look forward to seeing her again. Both uh, Dick Brubaker and Caroline Dobson will be uh, regulars on the show leading up to the April 16th runoff. Apparently, RFK Jr. is now finally speaking. He is finally up on stage. And I'd imagine he's probably about to announce his candidate. So let's see if this works here. Let's uh, let's see if this works without freezing up my computer completely. This is uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. speaking live as we speak. I brought Monsanto to the, to the negotiating table. We, we settled in all 40,000 cases. But I lived here for several months during that trial, and I got to really love the city. The Monsanto case was the latest in a lifetime of battles for me to get poisons out of our food and out of our farms and to restore our soils. The effort, that effort, has consumed a lot of my life. And I wanted a vice president who shared my passion for wholesome, healthy foods, chemical-free, for regenerative agriculture, for good soils. And I found exactly the right person. And among other things, she has used over the past several years cutting-edge technology, including AI, to calculate the catastrophic health consequences of toxins in our soil, our air, our water, and our food. Technology has been a lifelong passion for my future vice president. This is important because I also wanted a vice president who shares my indignation about the participation of big tech as a partner in the censorship and the surveillance and the information warfare that our government is currently waging against the American people. And that's why I'm bringing on someone with a deep inside knowledge about how big tech uses AI to manipulate the public. I want a partner with strong ideas about how to reverse those dire threats to democracy and to our freedoms. I managed to find a technologist at the forefront of AI. She has spent the last decade relying on neural networks, artificial intelligence, and cutting edge science to identify abuses in our government. She understands that the health of every American is a national security issue and a national security risk. Her work has proven time and again that health drives our economy, that it is the foundation of our mental health, our national happiness, our ability to lead the world in innovation and prosperity and in peace. I also wanted someone who was an athlete who could help me inspire Americans to heal, to get them back in shape. And I'm happy to report that my vice president is an avid surfer. (laughs) 
who, attend, who attended school on a softball scholarship. I wanted right here in Oakland, I wanted someone who was battle-tested, able to withstand criticism and the controversy and all the defamations and slanders and perjuries that are thrown against anyone who embarks on a presidential campaign. I wanted an advocate who has seen corruption of our regulatory agencies firsthand, who shares my indignation about the way it allows regulated industries to commoditize our food, our wildlife, and our children. I wanted someone who would honor the traditions of our nation as a nation of immigrants, but who also understands that to be a nation, we need secure borders. I, Again, this is live. I wanted a partner who was a gifted administrator, but also possesses the gift of curiosity, an open, inquiring mind, and the confidence to change even her strongest opinions in the face of contrary evidence. I wanted someone with a spiritual dimension and compassion and idealism, and above all, a deep love for the United States of America. So, who is it? Who is it, Robert? Spit it out, Bobby! And I found all of those qualities in a woman who grew up right here in Oakland. The daughter of immigrants who overcame every daunting obstacle and went on to achieve the highest levels of the American dream. So that is why I'm so proud to introduce to you the next Vice President of the United States, my fellow lawyer, a brilliant scientist, technologist, a fierce warrior mom, Nicole Shanahan. Well, there it is. Well, folks, if you want to keep watching that, you can go to RFK Jr.'s uh, Twitter page. I'm sure, it's all over YouTube. Nicole Shanahan, she apparently was behind that uh, RFK ad at the Super Bowl. Uh, that was an allusion back to that original 60s JFK ad. And uh, she is an impressive person, has done a lot. But I, I wonder, because, you know, there are polls showing now that Fox News is showing it. A few other places, uh, polling firms are showing it. The Kennedy is hitting double digits. But you got to wonder, who is this constituency? How much is he pulling from Trump? How much is he pulling from Biden? But in a uh, North Carolina Marist College poll showed 11% of registered voting voters backing Kennedy. And a Quinnipiac University survey from earlier this month shows him attracting double-digit support while in Pennsylvania. A Bloomberg Morning Consult and Fox News surveys from this month show him garnering double-digit support around the nation. And uh, Nicole Shanahan probably is an interest. It's, a, it's an unusual pick. It's not somebody who's a household name. But uh, when you look at what she's done and how high-profile she has been uh, within, say, the Silicon Valley culture, um, I'd imagine she's pretty liberal progressive, though. So if you're trying to pull Trump people your way, I don't know if that will exactly work out. And I'm just reading up a, a report here on uh, Shanahan. And then when you're getting, like, major papers gossiping about your love life, for instance, uh, Shanahan wa was married to Google co-founder Sergey Brin in 2018 and divorced him in 2022. The Wall Street Journal reported that she had an affair with billionaire Elon Musk, but both Shanahan and Musk have denied the accusation. The Wall Street Journal's narrative that an affair with Elon Musk led to the end of my marriage was about as accurate as claiming that the body heat of polar bears is responsible for melting of the Arctic ice caps. It felt senseless and cruel, Shanahan said in a response in People magazine all the way back in 2023. But Nicole Shanahan is RFK Jr.'s pick. Yeah, it doesn't get me excited, I'll put it that way. I'm more of a Vivek guy at the end of the day.
How about this? Let's hit a break. But first, this part of the program, again, brought to you by Dylan Rings. And folks, just seeing the images on Instagram, let's go to Dylan Rings on Instagram. This These renovations look amazing. Dylan Rings, the shop looks amazing. you got to get by 119 Brown Springs Road. It's just off of Atlanta Highway, a little before Taylor Road. It's kind of that turn you take to hit the back way into AUM, where the old fun zone used to be. You can still see the old skating rink platform and foundation out there. And uh, Dylan Rings, of course, is a full-service jewelry shop. They have an incredible selection from high-end pieces to the everyday jewelry. It still looks great, but isn't going to break the bank. And, of course, they can also do custom design work. Josh Ryder is a true artist over there. That's why I'm not surprised the renovations look so good, Josh. You have a great eye. I'll put it that way uh, for quality. And if you can dream it up, Josh Ryder can make it a reality. It can be out of whole cloth. You literally had a dream about it. Or it could be you inherited a piece of jewelry or several pieces that you want to put together or you want to update in certain ways. Of course, he can do that there. They also do spa treatments, like cleaning your jewelry, uh, repairs, including watch repairs, appraisals. They do it all there at Dylan Rings. So stop by today. They're reopened after a week of renovations. The place looks amazing. Again, that's 119 Brown Springs Road. And be sure to tell Josh and Leslie Ryder there at Dylan Rings that that Joey fella from the radio that Joey sent you. We'll be right back. He may not know whether he's coming or going, but whether you're going to work or coming home, Greg Budell is there. Mornings 6 till 9 and afternoons 3 till 6. Only on News Talk 93.1 FM WACV. Hey folks, this is Tammy Burkhalter at Prattville Farm Center. And did you know there's all kind of dogs that we can feed? Like uh, leave a dog, hot dog, creepy dog, swimming dog, hunting dog, shaggy dog, lap dog, window dog, riding dog, hiding dogs, puppy dog, standing dog, hat dog, cozy dog, family dog, even a dancing dog, man. So come see us at 1154 South Memorial Drive in Prattville, and we can even feed your kitty cat, too. Hello, everyone. Robbie Pelt with Capital City Roofing. If you think about it, your home is your biggest investment in life. Your roof covers your home, so why jeopardize your biggest investment on a roofer you don't know anything about when you can deal with a reputable roofing company like Capital City Roofing? We have an A-plus better business rating and the best manufacturers and workmanship warranties available. We do all residential and commercial roofing applications that are certified through the manufacturer to ensure you get the best material and workmanship money can buy. We also have your project in our best interest before and after construction has been done. Don't hesitate to call us if you have any roofing issues or questions. We will match any of our competitors' price and give you the same great workmanship warranty. We also give free estimates. Give us a call today and let us show you the difference. 277-3311. That's 277-3311. Or you can check us out on the web at www.capitalcityroofing.com. Capital City Roofing. We capitalize the roofing industry. For too long, Alabama's statewide news companies have shamed us for our conservative Christian values. Alabama deserves a news company that cherishes our culture, a company that isn't bought and paid for by the powers that be. 1819 News is that company. Run by Alabamians for Alabamians, 1819 News celebrates what is good and beautiful about our state while exposing those who work against our values in secret. Just go to 1819news.com to learn more. Subscribe to our newsletter. That's 1819news.com. The Rich Thomas Weather Network is brought to you by Ernest Financial. If you're tired of losing your money in the stock market, call David Ernest, 334-279-7431. Ernest Financial, LLC. Well, hi, everybody. The risk of showers is fading away quickly for most of us, otherwise mostly cloudy. Temperatures today, upper 60s to around 70. Partly cloudy, cooler tonight, overnight low 48. Tomorrow, sunshine, 74 for a high on Wednesday. A little cooler Thursday. I've got us in the upper 60s with more sun. And then a beautiful Easter weekend forecast. Sunshine, 72, good Friday. Upper 70s Saturday, near or above 80 on Easter Sunday with more sunshine. From the Blue Water Weather Center, this is Rich Thomas. CBNS Bank has a long history of stability and a legacy of serving our community's needs for generations since we began in 1906. At CBNS Bank, we're here for you. All loans subject to credit approval, member FDIC and equal housing lender. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Cole Plumbing, 279-8919. Cole Plumbing is number one in the number two business. You don't have to dig a hole. They have proprietary pipelining technology. Ask them about their tankless water heaters. Remember, when you have trouble with your bowl, call on Cole. 
On FM, on your smartphone, and online, the River Region's most trusted voice, News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. Joey Clark. Welcome back to News and Views in the Afternoon, or as we're calling it online, Joey Clark Live. Let's go to James at 272-9228. Hey, James, how you doing? I'm okay, Joey. That was Dylan's, was it not? Dylan Or Dylan Rings. Dylan, Dylan Rings? Yeah, no possessive. Okay, just Dylan Rings. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let me ask you this question, Joey. Now, don't let me get too personal here, but is there any, you know, is there, uh, any need for you going to Dylan, Dylan Rings here in the near future? Uh, like you talking about like asking a lady to marry me or something? Oh, well, of course. Uh, you know, yeah. no, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's like this right here. All of us that are living vicariously through others, we, we would like for them, you know, I, I guess, you know, everybody wants to be an influencer on some level. W- would you agree? Uh, yeah, there, there are a lot more people doing that. Yes. Well, and see at 60, running up fast on 61, and, and as a single man, I, I'm concerned for the rest of the single men out there mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, we're, we're supposed to uh, leave mother and father and, and, and cleave to that woman, you know, right. for the purpose of procreation. And, uh, of course, not all of us are called to marriage, but uh, I'm just trying to encourage you in that in that line. And now, now let me ask you this question, Joey. And I know I'm, I'm burning up a lot of air space here, but have you ever seen the movie uh, The Quiet Man with uh, John Wayne and Maureen O'Hare? I think is the uh, his opposite co-star. I don't believe I have. That is see that that is the the, the role I want to serve there is of the old man. You know, uh, acting as the go-between between between those two. If if you've seen the movie, you you know the character I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I haven't. I've got it pulled up on IMDb, but I've not seen it. Okay, it's uh, again that's the Quiet Man, and that's John Wayne and Maureen O'Hare. Yeah, I think I'm right. Yeah, 1952. Yeah. Okay. And uh, sometime after that, you had those two and uh, a couple of two, three others. That were done by uh, oh John Wayne's production company. I believe that was Bat Jack. Okay. I think I'm right. And uh, McClintock was one of those. And uh, another one was Big Jake. Mm-hmm. Yes, but the Quiet Man, Joey. Think think about it, brother. I I I would I don't want you to be sixty. Looking back on life, going, gosh, I wish I had listened to that knucklehead on the phone that day. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm in the debates right now around this issue are fascinating, absolutely fascinating. And because I've seen guys my age who got hitched early and uh, then they got divorced, and it was not a good idea. I, I get, I don't think anybody wants to go through that sort of thing. And of course it, not. And it really is a coin flip. I, I, there's this, uh, one show, Michael Knowles, who is with the Daily Wire, he's like a pre-Vatican II Catholic. He was having a conversation with this uh, woman named Pearl Davis, who is, you know, be- really standing up for men lately. She's kind of become a men's rights activist, and so Pearl is making the argument that you, Michael, you religious folks, are sending too many men down a wrong road. You look at the rate of divorce. You look at all these women don't deserve to be wives. Whereas Knowles is like, well, if you actually join a church your likelihood of divorce is, is goes down and you're probably going to find somebody that you build a relationship on values but even there this is a shocking number young or catholics even are getting divorced at a 30 something percent rate and that's including older populations when you look at people my age and younger there is something going on there where it's it's a lot of risk and i'll yeah. admit to you fully james i mostly see downside uh doesn't mean i've had this debate on air going back years I come down on the side of it only takes one. It's not this hypothetical of all men, all women. It's about meeting the right person, the right woman who compliments you. You're not jaded, are you, Joey? No, I'm just a little trepidatious because I've seen the, oh, how awful it can word. be. That's a big word. 
here, here's what I, I, was, I was talking with a lady once in, in, in the grocery store. And under, you remember the Fonzie scene where he's trying to run into young girls with the buggy? Mm hmm. Yeah, well, that's me in the grocery store. <laughs> so I'm talking with her, and I said, and, and we were talking about my singleness somehow. We got on that. And uh, I said, you know, all the good ones are taken. She said, shh, some of the ones that are taken aren't good. Mm. Uh, And here's what I shouldn't say. Well, let's just put it this way. Some people out there with women they were formerly married to have offices at the back door of the band room at certain universities, and they think they have uh, climbed the social ladder. (laughs) Are you you following me, Joe? Not really, but I'm... uh, That's good, because I don't want to, you know, label this woman. (laughs) Joey, it's been my pleasure, and hey, man, we're all in your corner. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. We'll we'll see what happens. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Ta-ta. Ta-ta. 272-9228 Two seven two nine two two eight. If you want to get in on the program, I'm so happy. So many of you want to see me get hitched, and I'll admit, uh, seeing my brother get married to a wonderful woman, Caroline, Will and Caroline, and seeing them not only get married and you know be that young married couple for a few years, but then have a daughter, Lucy, and my brand new niece. It is amazing. It's a lot of work. It's not always glamorous, of course, especially talking to both Will and Caroline about what it's like. They're both working people, uh, both work hard to make plenty of money. But it is, um, it's probably the most meaningful thing. Having a child with somebody you love is probably the most meaningful thing one could probably do in life. Now, there are some other ways, but for most people, that's it. It comes back to family. And uh, I just, I don't know. I'm in my routines. I'm in my groove. And I find myself uh, at times enjoying my groove. But we'll see. We'll see what the future holds. 272-9228. Oh, Judge Napolitano just sent me his brand new op-ed that'll be coming out Thursday early. Again, uh, I'll have to read that more when it's actually publicized. But taking Easter seriously is the name of this op-ed. I'm just doing a quick perusal. Yeah, this should be pretty good stuff. Yeah, I love how Judge Napolitano can appeal to the American revolutionary period in particular without sounding cliched and can then present uh, the deeper meanings behind uh, so much of what we celebrate each holiday. It ain't about a bunny, I'll put it that way, but we'll wait until a little later in the week to start talking such matters. Again, 334-272-9228 if you want to get in on uh, what I suppose is some conversation. Just seeing if there's anything breaking right now that I missed out on. Um, I'm not necessarily seeing anything, but there is some local news we have yet to get to. One story that is continuing uh, to have legs there at... 1819 News, 1819news.com, written up by Erica Thomas. We'll talk in more detail tomorrow. Is Alabama father invents opioid alternative following death of son? Tim Dooley, Ph.D. of Clay, has dedicated much of his life to saving others following the death of his youngest child to the opioid crisis. Dooley said that after decades of working in molecular biology and applying his knowledge towards drug discovery and drug development, he has a new goal following his personal tragedy, to turn lemons into lemonade. Well, just a little taste there, because we're going to be talking in detail with Erica Thomas about that tomorrow. Let's see who this is. You're on line one. You're on the air. Papa B. Papa B. Hey, Papa B. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good, pretty good. So your sidekick is still out uh, making, hustling and making some money. I would hope so. If he's just farting around the house, then I'm going to be very upset. I mean, you but... know, I mean, I could probably just slide over there on the pontoon boat and, you know, make sure he ain't fishing or something. If he's... Wait, are you just looking uh, for an excuse a... to take the boat out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 
I'm on I might be, uh, but you know, if I catch him, he's going to have to go ahead and post it, like on Facebook or something. You know, if I catch him fishing, so you know, uh, that would be the only requirement I'd have. Um, so we're looking at now uh, this big old slice of humble pie that Leticia James and Judge Indoor Gun. Mm-hmm. That is, uh, I can't. I mean, I you pronounce his name, but Judge Gilligan. Anyway, that weird little uh, pervert. Is that who you're talking about? The pervert. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So they're having to uh, eat a big old slice of uh, humble pie here. And uh, I saw uh, Trump's lawyer uh, really rub it in on some of the interviews. Um, and really an abuse of the uh, court system that we have. Oh. That was an interesting take that I saw, though, uh, from some folks that said that, you know, really what they're trying to do here, since they uh, don't necessarily control the Supreme Court anymore, they being the uh, Democrats, is they're trying to um, well, kind of just mess the whole system up. It, it, you know, uh, I guess bastardize the system. Turn it into a circus. You know, uh, for what reason? Well, I mean, the same reason they would do that for any of our institutions, uh, uh, government, and that is so that they can acquire and accumulate power in areas that they would prefer, such as the executive branch. What do you think about that theory, Joey? Does that mean- essentially kind of burn down the village so you can rule it? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. I, I think That's there's a I'm lot saying. to it. I, I think they're. I think everybody is starting to get wise, no matter your point of view on the world, that something's got to give here. We're working off institutions that were built decades ago by people that, for the most part, are no longer alive. Few of them are still around. Uh, right. It's amazing who's still around, actually. Uh, mm-hmm. But I, I think something's got to give. It's why you're seeing the World Economic Forum with the Great Reset stuff. Uh, it's why you're seeing the Democrats try to take us into this green energy future where everything will be more equitable to across social lines, yada, yada, yada. And I've been trying to beat the drum, saying to more conservative types, though it maybe betrays their temperament, we have to be ready to do our own thing as well. Uh, that, you know, just appealing to the, you know, the Constitution ain't enough. You actually, I, I think one, I'll put it this way. The village is probably going to be burned down one way or another. I and, think so. And it's a matter of who actually ends up on top after the uh, the controlled fire. Uh, or not so controlled in some ways, but yeah, I yeah, agree. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that, uh, you know, this is just another indicator uh, that the more uh, the Democrats lose and the more uh, Donald Trump is seen by, well, the American people as being the uh, person that can go in and take care of business, uh, the more outlandish the Democrats are going to get. So I'm looking for what people term as a black swan event. Do you know what that is? Yeah, uh, Nassim Taleb uh, uh, comes up with that term. Yeah, it's essentially something, a bolt out of the blue that nobody sees coming. A 9-11 kind of thing. Yep. Have planes flying into buildings and buildings collapse. Something big, something really that can dominate the news cycle for weeks on the end. Um, boy, what is that going to have to be? But um, as we get closer to the election and maybe even just directly after the election, uh, I just uh, believe that we're going to have some kind of something big uh, happen um, engineered or maybe just allowed to happen. And, um, man, well, and, and I mean, COVID you know, was one of those. I, wouldn't you agree COVID got to fit that bill and it's just, we're now going to have another one. Uh, well, yeah, COVID did, it did in a way, you're right. And most ways that you could use uh, that term black swan. Um, 
but I believe COVID, the COVID uh, scheme uh, was very well planned and very well orchestrated and had been in plan. In fact, there were some people that speculated that uh, the uh, COVID uh, hoax was actually the insurance policy <laughs> that, uh, you know, some of the FBI agents were discussing at the time that the, you know, that whole big insurance policy thing. There were debates, actually, uh, that uh, I had also heard of in Georgetown University where they were just saying, well, look, what if all else fails and Trump wins the election of 2020? They were yeah. prepared to go to a Marshall Ross type thing. Uh, wait, Papa V, hold it on, was, everybody. Uh, everybody yeah. calm down now. Pete Buttigieg is on the scene of the bridge collapse. <laughs> it's going to be all right. Pete Buttigieg, it's there. Well, we can thank God for that. <laughs> I still remember anyway, Trump going, you say it, boot edge edge, boot edge edge. <laughs> I call him booty judge. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, it's the profit. Uh, yeah. right. But I don't want to take up any more time. I'm just, telling you, I'm just telling you that we all need to be prepared for this big event, whatever it is, and the imagination runs wild. I would not put it past the pop of loot somewhere, uh, something like that. Who knows what it where it would be or why or how, but uh, something big uh, would be uh, something uh, coming our way, I do believe, uh, either before or just right after the election to disrupt uh, any kind of Donald Trump victory. Anyway, all right, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, Bobby. 272 9228. Greg Vidal saying there's an accident on southbound Taylor Road, uh, meaning he's going to be running a little bit behind. But one lane is blocked there, southbound Taylor Road. So uh, across from a UM, I'm not sure what a UM is. I'm just being dumb, I guess, right now. Hey, got to hit this break. More news and views in the afternoon after this. Want to carry News Talk in your pocket? Download the News Talk 93.1 app from the App Store. Available on iPhone and Android. Never miss a moment. Download now. Hey, this is David Little from Tucker Pecan Company. We've been advertising with Blue Water Broadcasting for over 10 years now, and the results have been amazing. Every day we have new customers that come in that have heard us on all the different radio stations that we advertise on. If you want to help your business grow, the best way to do it is through radio advertising through Blue Water Broadcasting. They do a great job in promoting our business and helping us grow our business, and hopefully they can help you grow your business too. Now you can add the power of digital advertising Advertising to the number one reach of radio. The Blue Waters 20 years of local advertising and marketing success show you how. Grow your business with a complete suite of digital solutions combined with the reach of the most listened to radio group in the River Region. Call us or go to BlueWaterBroadcasting.com to find out how we can increase your return on investment. Blue Water Broadcasting, local folks helping local business. Take a little Tucker Pecan and things are happening at Tucker that's going to surprise you. They're moving. Here's David to tell you more. Yeah, Bubba, we are. We're moving. We've been out here since 1952, and it was time to make a change, and we're making a change, and it will be for the better. We're going to move to 135 Mulberry Street. We're going to have our store over there. Our kitchen's going to be in the back. It's going to be a great opportunity for us, and we're going to have all the great gifts we have, and we're going to do the mail order like we've always done, but we're just moving to an area where it has other shops like us, which will be good for us, and, you know, it makes it easier for people to come shopping. They can just jump off the interstate right there on Mulberry, take a left, go about a mile up. We're on the left. So that's what we're doing. We're going to have the same great candies and gifts and all that, but in a different location. And we're starting to move, and hopefully we will be moved and out. Everything done by the end of the month. So starting in March, we will be at 135 Mulberry Street. Y'all just come see us now. This is Eddie Bader from eXp Realty. You know me from co-hosting News and Views with Joey Clark for the past several years. Are you looking for a real estate agent that will go above and beyond to help you find your dream home? Look no further than Hannah Grantham and myself. Hannah and I have the knowledge and experience in the Tri-County area to guide you through the home buying process as easy and smooth as possible. Our attention to detail and dedication to our clients ensures that you will always receive the highest level of service. Don't settle for anything less than the best. Call Hannah and Eddie today, 334-368-6358. 
This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Cole Plumbing, 279-8919. Cole Plumbing is number one in the number two business. You don't have to dig a hole. They have proprietary pipelining technology. Ask them about their tankless water heaters. Remember, when you have trouble with your bowl, call on Cole. If the news happens, you'll hear about it first. The River Region's most trusted voice. News Talk 93.1 FM WACV. Joey Clark. Welcome back. Now, uh, Ray Bowles is on vacation. So, I just want to tell you folks about Prattville Carpet, great sponsor of the program. And have been sponsors now for years. Really fantastic folks that can offer you a high quality product and just great service. So, of course, they can provide you carpet. That's in the name, Bradville Carpet, but any sort of resurfing, re resurfacing material. It could be you want to put down traditional hardwood floors, or maybe you don't want to mess with traditional hardwood, but you want the look of traditional hardwood. Might I suggest the luxury vinyl plank they have? It really is uh, fantastic. Even the new laminate products. You don't think about laminate floors from the 90s or the 80s. You got to go check out what they have today. It really is beautiful stuff. Or it could be you want to remodel a kitchen, maybe the countertop and backsplash or a bathroom with ceramic tile. They could do all of that there at Prattville Carpet. So call them today at 285-8117. That's 285-8117. And uh, ask about a free in-home measurement. They'll come to you. They'll literally go the extra mile. They'll measure out the space you want resurfaced. And then once you pick out the product you want to resurface it with, they'll know exactly how long it's going to take, how much it's going to cost. It's a pretty good system they got there at Prattville Carpet. So give them a call today. That's 285-8117. That's 285 285- 8117. And be sure to tell them that Joey, that fell on the radio, sent you. Let's go to Sam. Hello, Sam. Joey, thank you for taking my call. Um, you, man, the, the rain quit, the sun's out. That's, All right. That's pop. Yeah, yes, sir, right here, uh, right side of Troy. Um, uh, anyways, the whole now, thing. You struck rain. me as one of those Pardon? guys, like, you know that song, I'm only happy when it rains? I always I'm thought of happy. Sam when I heard um, it. When I'm high, okay. If, if I get, yeah, if I get really messed up, that's it. That gets grungy. I get to play that. Start playing that music. Oh, man. he's listening right to the Smiths again. Uh, oh yeah, no! Uh, get all the all them bad habits from the nineties. Start Smiths. Hey, uh, in all seriousness, nuts. The uh, the rings are expensive. Okay, mm. you know we're talking about the rings. This is a serious topic for young men, and especially one that we hold out so much, you know, hope for. Um, I was just gonna let you borrow mine. Okay, no. I um. I, my, my, yeah, my, my wedding band. It's a big chunk of gold. It's got black inlay. It's a wonderful thing. That actually and sounds a nice. Yeah, and, uh, but I need it on the weekend because I do wear it when I, you know. Oh, going it. grocery shopping? <laughs> the, you know, that too. That's the number one place to eat women. That's it. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go hang out there. by the vegetable and fruit section and flash yeah. my ring around. That's it. You, you know, know I Even men. Man, I, I can't even imagine what a set go for. But that's all right. That's what I had. Uh, well, man, enjoyed the show something first. first. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Well, and it looks like Greg Budell made it here in one piece. So that's a good thing. So y'all stay tuned. Happy hour. Greg and Rosie, they're next. Joey Clark. Broadcasting from the Riverside Chevrolet Master Control Center, this is WACV Kusada, News Talk 93.1 FM. When it's Chevy, it's Riverside. With SRN News, I'm John Scott. The head of a supply chain management company says Americans should expect shortages of goods as the Baltimore Bridge collapse affects ocean container shipping and East Coast trucking logistics. About 800 shipping containers currently making their way to Baltimore's port are being rerouted. Prosecutors announcing a deal with Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton to drop securities fraud charges that were pending against him for nearly a decade. That resolution lets Paxton avoid a trial which had been set to begin on April 15th. If he had been convicted, Paxton could have been sentenced to life in prison. Stock